You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Good morning, four o'clock on the dot right now. Hearing your stories as Nashville homeowners try to tackle violent crimes, in some cases on their own, their demands for change throughout the city. Plus the frustrations grow over to Brentwood as well. There was a town hall meeting last night. We'll hear from victims about what they want lawmakers to do after a string of crimes. Leading into the first weekend of summer and temperatures rising, humidity coming along with it. How hot you'll feel for the weekend. All right, happy Friday. Thank you so much for waking up with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Erica Glover. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. Glad to be here for you. Nice and early here this morning to kick off your 4 o'clock hour. Right now, Fox 17 News getting new information into our newsroom. This time for Metro Police, who say a 19-year-old has now died after a Sunday night shooting. Yeah, police say somebody shot Darwin Henriquez Perdomo in the head. Uh, we've got it mapped out here for you, showing you where it happened near Elysian Fields. Uh, and let's see, we've got nearby the 404 uh, bar and grill witnesses telling police that right before the shooting in this area, a group of people were in a parking lot near Nolensville Pike and Elysian Fields. We do know that there is now a $5,000 reward for any information that does lead to an arrest. So if you're watching this and maybe you do have that detail, the information that they're looking for, you were asked to go ahead and call Crime Stoppers. Making headlines this morning, local leaders and homeowners. Uh, everybody's saying they're fed up with the crime across our communities. Over the past few weeks, we have covered an uptick in crimes across the mid-state. Yeah, multiple thefts, retail theft, teen violence, and then crime on WeGo buses. So now community members are teaming up, trying to find some possible solutions. Yeah, we have uh, coverage this morning with Fox 17 News reporter Johnny Maffey, who is live outside the library uh, in Brentwood this morning with more on this meeting. Good morning, Jen and Erica. So last night there was a meeting that was spearheaded by State House candidate uh, Claire Jones. And again, it's all to address everything that's been going on. People have been frustrated and the victims were the ones that took center stage. We heard from a victim, uh, a covenant parent, as well as a victim from the 2018 Waffle House shooting, both survivors. And uh, we also heard from some other people in the field as well, talk about resources needed and things like that. So what came out of all the meeting? Well, people are calling on state lawmakers to do more for families, for victims, for survivors of these crimes, and also, well, try to prevent it from happening in the first place. And it's all about trying to have that discussion as well. Now, Sarah Shoup Newman, she's a covenant parent who says families need more resources. Otherwise, this problem is going to get worse. We caught up with her to ask what she thinks of what's been going on at the state house. It's been disappointing. I think we saw a lot of great proposals that did not seem controversial and it just seemed like a lot of things were shot down without getting a fair chance to even be heard um, from gun violence to free school lunches to healthcare things and it, it was just really disappointing to see that those discussions weren't even going to be had. And Shoup Newman adds that if you can't have the discussion, well, she's losing faith in humanity. Coming up at 4.30 when we check back in here from Brentwood, we'll be hearing from a survivor of the 2018 Waffle House shooting. Live this morning in Brentwood, I'm Johnny Matthew, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Johnny, thank you. And to know what's happening in your community, get the very latest information right at your fingertips by downloading our free Fox 17 News app. You can get it by scanning the QR code that we're sharing right here on your screen. Easily get access to it. You can also always visit fox17.com. Let's check in now, though, with our COVID meteorologist. Good morning, Greg. Happy Friday. Good morning. Happy Friday, indeed. And now we're finally getting toward the weekend. And now here's what's going to happen. The humidity finally going to take over. It's going to fight our actual air temperature. When you get really humid, the temps don't get as hot, but the feels like climbs higher. So here's what we're going to feel like the entire weekend. 100 degrees plus for Saturday, Sunday, and then into Monday and Tuesday as well. So the heat remains in the next week. A few pop up showers and storms out there. Don't go banking on getting a lot of rain to cool us down or thick cloud cover. No, it'll be a few pop ups here and there. Really, our next best rain chance is not going to be until next week and the middle of next week at that. What we're tracking is just going to be the increase in uncomfortability when it comes to temperatures here, feeling above 100 degrees. Weather's influence on traffic is once again not there to be felt. We're dry to start the day, nothing on radar. Areas of patchy fog I'm watching out for. We had a couple that did develop yesterday and we could get one or two of those this morning. We'll keep our eyes on it for you. Pop up shower later in the day. Can't rule it out, but it's again very, very few and far between when it comes to rain chances. Here's visibility tracker. 
one little dot here, right near the Cookville area. And we don't get color on the map unless there's visibility less than a mile. That being said, doesn't mean there aren't a few patches that are out there that just aren't being picked up quite yet. Look outside right now, we're relatively clear. The moon is bright, it is big, it is the strawberry full moon. Tonight at 808 is when it peaks, but the sun just sets right around then. So really right now and then after I would say nine o'clock tonight, gonna look great. Lowest full moon we've had in years. The lower the moon is over the horizon, the bigger it looks. They call it a moon illusion. The same thing happens at sunset with the sun. So keep that in mind. It will appear a little bit larger. Great viewing for it. Even right now, if we just look out the window and find where the moon's at, we're at 74 degrees, crystal clear. Here's your seven day. We're going to go for 95 this afternoon, maybe a shower. We'll talk about that in a few. 98 for tomorrow and on Sunday with heat index values above 100 degrees, and the heat index will stay above 100 on Monday and Tuesday. So really, temperature on the thermometer doesn't map. It's still going to feel abrasive no matter what way you look at it. Greg, thank you. It's your clear traffic time right now. Looking good here to kick off your Friday morning at 406. A live look from I-40 at Donaldson Pike. This is right over by the airport. Smooth sailing now here. We'll check in again in just a couple minutes. All right, 406 is the time. Just ahead, new charges for a woman accused of killing her daughter in East Tennessee. What her defense team is arguing. And we were just mentioning steer clear traffic. Check this out. TDOT has a lot of construction projects going on right now. They just about 409 and right now in Operation Crime and Justice. We know one person is dead and another is in a Nashville hospital. It all happened after a shooting over in Clarksville. So this morning we're getting some more details. We understand it happened at a home over on Timberline Way yesterday afternoon. This was a scene. Police say once they arrived, they found two people shot and they tell us one person died inside this home. First responders took the survivor by life flight over to Nashville and they are now in critical condition. Police, though, this morning still trying to piece together exactly what happened. Again, this is over in Clarksville. It's 409 right now. An East Tennessee mother accused of killing her 15 month old daughter is now facing new charges. This is a story that we first reported on about four years ago. Megan Boswell arrested in the disappearance and death of her toddler, Evelyn Boswell. Megan now faces 20 new counts, including felony murder. And because this case is getting so much attention, Boswell's attorney is asking the courts to relocate her trial to another city. What we've asked is to move it out of Sullivan County. Obviously, I think this case has been picked up in most of the major news markets in Tennessee, but it probably has not been examined as heavily, say, in the Nashville market or the Memphis market as it would be here because it's not local to them. Well, but in the same vein, we have been reporting on this story uh, for the last four years. By the way, a judge is set to hear arguments on relocating the trial coming up August 15th. Something else worth noting, what happened to Evelyn Boswell also uh, resulted in Evelyn's Law, which is now on the books here in Tennessee. If we're presented a motion to revoke their bond, we're going to hear it. Well, this morning we are now hearing from judges for the first time on the debate, ongoing debate over low bond. This comes as we see more and more repeat offenders who are out awaiting trial and then committing more serious crimes. During a panel right here hosted by Tennessee Voices for Victims, local judges made a point that they are not the only ones who need to be held accountable. They say they can only go by what is presented in the courtroom by defense attorneys. Well, defense attorneys, they spoke out. They say they asked for bond with what they feel is appropriate. Nancy King is the mother of a victim who was shot in Green Hills by a repeat offender. She says she feels prior convictions have not been looked at close enough. I hope you support the local judges and legislators in pushing through bond reform. I'm sorry it had to hit me so close to home, close to home before I started paying attention to support the needs of victims. A lot of perspectives were shared at this meeting, but everyone at the panel agreed that yes, the city does need to make some changes. Coming up in your forecast, we're going to keep the heat going and actually crank it up for the weekend. Nothing on the radar, but we'll do our best to try to find any rain leading into the next couple of days. And we're keeping our eye on steer clear traffic for you right now. I-65 at Trinity Lane looking good this morning. No issues right now anywhere in the mid-state. Happy Friday.
Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Glad to be here for you. 514 Fox 17 News getting more information this morning on a story that we first brought you yesterday. We are now getting a deeper look at how Nashville's tourism and hospitality industry is growing, plus a closer look at the plans underway to try to balance the growth while keeping locals in mind. That balance is tough. Fox 17 News is Madeline Nolan joining us live from downtown Nashville talking more about the record tourism to come. Good morning. Good morning. That's right. In the past, city leaders have focused on growing tourism in Music City, but now that they have gotten here, it's about main maintaining that they can sustain this tourism while also in upholding this culture. Now, um, Nashville tourism is a huge economic engine, according to the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation. Now, visitor, they expect growth more than 21 million people in 2034. But one key factor of the plan is changing is the way that people view Nashville, especially Broadway. Something the CBC mentions in their eight part strategic plan is how Broadway has drastically changed over the years from something that used to celebrate Nashville's culture now threatened by alcohol overconsumption, brawling and drug use. One of the new programs that we just introduced is called Push Pause, and it's come play Music City, have a good time, have fun, don't overdo it. And, you know, the Riley Strain thing is a great example of that. It's like we want people to have a good time. We want them to enjoy the music, but we don't want them to lose their best judgment. The plan has been in the works for over two years, taking input from nearly 100 leaders. Other focuses include drawing in both international visitors, big events, while also working with the police to keep it safe and clean. Now, you can read more at um, our website about this strategic plan. For now, live here on Broadway, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. All right, Greg, I think we should um, we should conduct a test. and. Uh, non-scientific test oh. to see the difference in the humidity outside <laughs> and inside here in the studio. Do we have a way to do that? Yes, hairspray. Okay, so it's just going to be like a real field test. What hold number do Good you use? gracious. I'm telling you, it's going to be rough everywhere. Yeah, I don't know what's going on up in here, but uh, it doesn't feel much better outside. I'll tell you that for sure. Yeah. And here's the thing. I lowered the temperatures for the actual weekend itself. They don't say 100 anymore, but it's going to feel even hotter than 100 degrees. It'll still feel well up close to 102. Taking a look outside, monitoring for any areas of patchy fog. Not seeing much right now. A calm but very warm start to the day. So, again, with what to wear getting out the door, I'm going to add the umbrella back into the closet here this morning just because there could be a pop-up shower as we lead into the afternoon hours. Now, this is not rain for everyone, not even close to it, but there could be a pop-up or two that does develop. Everything else, summer clothes, we're well back into the 90s again this afternoon. Let's get you up and out the door, and we are starting off in familiar territory. Every morning has been almost nearly identical when it comes to our 70s, and that's not going to change. Every morning is going to be in the 70s for the next 7 to 10 days. 72 by 5 o'clock, 71 at 6, and 74 at 7. Partly cloudy, but again, that chance for a noon to 5 p.m. pop-up shower or storm. Always monitoring the airport for you, especially leading into a weekend, whether it be an A. 80, 81 degrees at 9, 92 degrees at noon, 94 degrees at 3 p.m. Our weather back home, once again, will not be an issue when it comes to any flight delays or cancellations. We always watch for them, though. Big board this morning as is at 74 degrees. Seven delays right now. Very, very custom for this time of the year. So nothing that's catching us off guard at the airport, which is good. Overall, temperatures are going to be hot. This is our first weekend of the up of this brand new season. We're talking summer now. Maybe a shower today and tomorrow. Don't bank on that. Hot 98 degrees, a pair of them on Saturday and Sunday, a pair of 99s on Monday and Tuesday. Our rain chance ramps up a little bit more by the middle of next week, but really every day between now and Tuesday into Wednesday, very sporadic hit and miss spot showers and weak thunderstorms. Steer clear traffic right now at 418. We've got a live look for you. I 40 at Charlotte. This is west of Nashville looking good right now. We are currently crash free across the mid state. National headlines here on this Friday morning as former President Trump continues on the campaign trail. The Supreme Court has decisions to make that could impact things in the upcoming presidential election. Fox News' Matt Galka breaking down the big decisions the court will be making. And you know, 
I love Milwaukee. I was the one that picked Milwaukee. As former President Donald Trump continues on the campaign trail, almost a month removed from his guilty verdict in a New York hush money case and awaiting sentencing, two cases from the country's high court still hang over his head. I feel that as a president, you have to have immunity. Very simple. Trump argues a president needs immunity from criminal prosecution for things done in office. The Supreme Court will weigh in with an opinion that could impact two pending federal cases against him, one having to do with taking classified documents to Florida and another related to his alleged role in the January 6th Capitol riot. Lene Erickson with center-left think tank Third Way says a decisive ruling for Trump could put presidents above the law. I do not think a president should have absolute criminal immunity. Uh, I think that the laws of the United States should apply to everyone, including the president, and I think that the Supreme Court is going to agree with that. Others fret an immunity ruling could give Trump the powers of a king, something the conservative Heritage Foundation says is overblown. Well, that's just hyperbole and nonsense. Look, uh, we have appropriate mechanisms to deal with presidential overreach or overreach by other executive officials. And it's also important to keep in mind that presidents already enjoy immunity from civil suit. There's also a pending January 6th case in front of the justices. The opinion would apply to January 6th defendants facing obstruction of justice charges and could shorten sentences. One of those defendants could be Donald Trump if his cases move forward. It certainly would at very least uh, affect their sentencing, uh, and it might in some cases uh, result in the people not being convicted at all. Donald Trump's attorneys have used the immunity argument to try and get two of his cases dismissed. The Supreme Court's still pending ruling almost guarantees that the former president will not be on trial again before November's election. Reporting in Washington, I'm Matt Gelka. 420 right now and summer is now officially here and the heat might get in the way of your travel. We'll take a closer look at how air travel in particular could be impacted. Nearly 22 million children living in America rely on schools for their meals. Fox 17 News and our parent company Sinclair Broadcasting are part... Well, this Friday morning, there are parts of Galveston, Texas. Look at this video underwater after the first named Alberto, uh, the first hurricane, I should say, or tropical storm makes landfall right here in the U.S. Yeah, we know at least four people died when Alberto hit Mexico and now, as Erica mentioned, making landfall in Galveston, Texas. We've got some aerial video of the coastal town showing houses surrounded by floodwaters from remnants of Alberto, the governor of Texas issuing a disaster declaration. Well, summer is officially here, began yesterday, and so is the heat. Now experts are sharing their concerns regarding the impact that high temperatures can have on flights. We were just talking about this during the break. Yeah, so I guess for me, living in the desert southwest and the dry heat where temperatures would get up to like 115 degrees and we would fly, it was really tumultuous going through these thermal pockets. Flight experts say Boeing and other planes can take off safely in temperatures of up to 122 degrees, but the heat might cause the air um, to create these pockets that feel like turbulence mm -hmm. and can definitely make the plane feel like it's heating up. Now, in some cases, um, airlines might have to do things like remove baggage, extra baggage, to try to create a difference in the weight for the plane as they go through. Uh, this kind of heat. Yeah, flight experts say if you want to go ahead and fly during hot temperatures, you can aim for early in the morning or perhaps late evening flights to make all these, you know, considerations. I didn't know what it felt like flying in heat like that until I did it. And I, it, I don't know how to explain it other than to say it made me feel sick. Really? Going through these thermal pockets. I've never done this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even landing and takeoff, if it's above a certain temperature, planes physically, like the physics of it, they, it, they cannot take off yeah. because hot air is thin, and the thinner the air is, the less that the engines can actually lift the plane off the ground. That's why they said sometimes your baggage is taken off to make the plane lighter. Yeah. So do they know the temperatures in preparation sure. and therefore plan for the baggage? Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, well, I mean, they'll, they'll know at what temperature they can or cannot take off. And if they can't, they'll even cancel a flight just for heat. Really? There's nothing else going on except for the heat. So there are some areas of the country right now are feeling it big time. So that's why we keep looking at the big board and we'll keep doing it for you.
throughout this morning just to see where any delays or cancellations are coming from. But yeah, a completely sunny day that's too hot and your flight could be canceled. Take a look today. That's not going to happen back home. We're not that hot. We're not well into the 100s, but many chunks of the country are going to be 95 degrees today. Let's hope we get one of those 20% chance of a shower. Uh, it's likely not going to happen, but we've got it in there. There are going to be a few of the things we need in the atmosphere to possibly give us a pop up. We're getting muggy. I mean, it's already humid. It is 426 in the morning. We're in the 70s and it's humid. So this is where we're starting and that's where we're going to end up. 95 again, sunset 807. This is actually not our latest sunset, even though we're losing daylight. We'll talk about that in about five minutes. Weekend outlook though. Humidity building heat index for both days will be above 100 degrees. So we were talking all week about will we won't we when it comes to the actual air temperature hitting 100. Well, regardless, that number doesn't matter. It's going to be so humid that it will feel like we're in the low triple digits both afternoons. We are warm around the clock. Look at that 70s overnight Saturday into Sunday right now on your screen. Maybe you got weekend plans. You're going to be kind of tuned out a little bit, whether that be from being online or the whole nine yards. You can still have weather with you when you're on the go. Zoom the QR code right there. Zoom the QR code. Jeez. Zoom in your camera. <laughs> and scan the QR code. Don't just zoom into it. You have to actually push the little button and then download the free app. You can also go to the App Store, Google Play Store and just type in code red. Happy Friday morning, Greg's Brain. Here we go. All right, Greg's Brain, Zumba. We're gonna take a quick look at your street clear traffic, take you out south of Nashville. This is I-24 at Harding Place, looking pretty good. We'll continue sharing those street clear traffic updates. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Coming up this morning on Fox 17 News, we're live in Brentwood after a town hall last night as residents are frustrated from a rise in crime. We'll give you the message from that meeting. Humidity takes over going in toward the weekend. That means our feels like temperatures could soar above 100 degrees and that's not just for the weekend. How long that's going to last coming up in your COVID forecast. And steer clear traffic right now. A live look from I-40 at Church Street, part of the downtown loop here. Looking good to kick off your Friday morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us here on a Friday morning. For Fox 17 News, I'm Erica Glover. I'm Jennifer Waddell. Let's get straight to our top story this half hour. We have a silver alert that has been issued for a missing man out of Cumberland County. This is east of Nashville over on the plateau. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI, is now searching for 80-year-old Roger Phillips. Now, he was last seen Wednesday. Here's a photo right here on your screen. The TBI reporting that Phillips is about 5 foot 11 with gray hair and blue eyes. He may also be wearing black jogging pants with a white stripe down the side and black shoes. The TBI says Phillips may be traveling in a 2010 Ford F-150 extended cab truck with a Tennessee tag 191 BHKL. If you have any information, maybe you know where he could be. You were asked to call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Just a conversation. They just want to talk. People in Brentwood, that's all they want with lawmakers is a conversation. They are concerned about crime and they want change. And now we're learning what one community is calling for after a town hall over at the Brentwood Library, which is where we also find Fox 17 News' Johnny Maffey live this morning. Johnny, what was the message after yesterday's meeting? Well, you guys said it right there. A lot of people were just trying to have a conversation, really open things up, which is what was going on last night right here at the Brentwood Library. Now, another thing was they want lawmakers to provide more resources, really try to help families and victims and survivors of some of these crimes. And a big topic of discussion was things like the Covenant shooting and also the Waffle House shooting back in 2018 over in Antioch. Now, we heard from a parent, a, a Covenant parent. We also heard from a... Uh, um, Sharita Henderson. She has gone through a couple of dozen surgeries after being shot multiple times over at that Waffle House in Antioch. And she says it's been a gruesome six years since. It wasn't just me. Um, there are other victims and survivors and their families. And we've all tried to come together and find some sort of normalcy and some sort of direction. Um, for us, unfortunately, there was no direction. Um, resources were not available for us in ways that we needed them to be, and we had to figure them out on our own. And so Claire Jones, who is a candidate for the state house, says Tennessee is the seventh highest rate of gun violence uh, in the country, and so she wants to see some change. Live this morning in Brentwood, I'm Johnny Maffey, guys. Back over to you. 
Johnny, thank you. And uh, we would like to know what you think about this. Do you think uh, crime is the biggest challenge facing Nashville? Right now, 48% of you say yes, but we had other options in our question. Uh, do you think growth is a big challenge? Crime, the homeless crisis, or maybe something else? Uh, and right now, most of you say crime is the biggest challenge facing Nashville. If you'd like to sound off, uh, you can always check out our question of the day over at twitter.com. Just search our handle, Fox Nashville. All right, 44, 33. Can I get my words out too? Hey, good morning, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> It's that Friday morning brain. You got to kind of get the brain fog going and get into the, well, not fog, but the thick air. It is already humid. There's no way getting around it here, and there's no sugar coating it. It's not going to be comfortable here the next four or five days. What's new this morning? The humidity really taken over hour by hour. The dew points going up. You don't want to see that. Our first weekend of summer, and you get every vibe of summer from it. Humidity, heat on top of that, and then UV index is up. Tons of daylight, which is nice at least. We have the one little thing there for us. Feels like temperatures will be right near 100 degrees Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Let's hope we can get one of these to fire a pop up shower or storm. We have no chances for severe weather, so any rain we get just may cool us down, bring in a couple of clouds. It could help out a little bit. Now the humidity will return right after it, but it'll knock the temps down if you get lucky enough to get stuck under one of those for the weekend. Take a look here. Nothing happening right now. Radar is bone dry. We've not had a drop of rain here in the last oh, 36 hours, and that's going to continue for most of today. Lunchtime. Very similar to yesterday, 89 degrees by 11 o'clock, 92, 92 by noon. That means from 12 o'clock through 8 p.m. We're at or above the 90 degree mark. And this is honestly going to be one of the better days that we have ahead of us, even though we're going to be at 95. When you go upper 90s and then have a heat index value from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday that could be at or above 100, right around that mark, uncomfortable. And usually you hope, okay, well, can I get a cool night? That's not happening. Every night for the next five nights will be in the 70s to take us in the next week. Greg, thank you so much. 434 is the time, and right now we do want to check in for another steer clear traffic update. Let's take you out to north of Nashville. You can see for yourself Briley Parkway, east of Gallatin. This area is looking very good. <laughs> no issues, not a lot of traffic at 434 this Friday morning. We'll continue sharing all of your traffic updates, though, throughout 9 o'clock. We got you covered. Well, get this. Metro Police say the woman you see here on your screen has confessed to trying to set a fire inside a discount store because she said she was bored. Officers say Adriana Ellison used an electric lighter that she had just bought to set a display on fire. She was bored. Why well, I bet police officers and Store management could have thought of other things uh, for her to do. Uh, right now, she's facing charges of attempted aggravated arson. If you want to get more stories like this or anything else delivered to your inbox in the morning, want to wake up, check your email, get the headlines, sign up for our daily newsletter right now at fox17.com. In your community, a group of golfers wants a whole lot more than just bragging rights. We're going to show you some video here talking about the 615 match open with some celebrity golfers yesterday. We previewed this on Fox 17 News this morning, all morning long. It is all part of an ongoing effort to raise money for a nonprofit that is called Souls for Souls. Yes, yeah, so we had golfers out at the Hermitage Golf Course and they beat the heat to provide shoes for those in need. This golf tournament focusing on helping homeless children. So we know that there are more than 1 million children in the United States that are experiencing homelessness. And there are more than 5,000 of those kids right here in the Middle Tennessee area. And that's every single year that we need to prepare, we need to provide shoes to those kids. Fox 17 News teamed up with Cromwell Media for this event. We had Jill Jelnick out there, Caitlin Miller, Brett Luna, along with former Titans coach Jeff Fisher, and Chris Daughtry out there as well. There he is, still rocking a good event and a great cause. Looking ahead, travel experts are expecting a record-breaking number of travelers this 4th of July, which is God, right around the corner. A look at the travel numbers after the break. And a couple different live looks here to kick off here. Right now, Fox 17 News, we're looking ahead, taking a live look over at Nissan Stadium. Hey, get ready to hear those engines roar up. Monster Jam is going to be back at Nissan Stadium tomorrow. It's a lot of fun for you and the whole family. Have you been before, Jen? I have. And the kids loved it when they were little. And I think it is a great family event. Just make sure you wear the earmuffs or the earplugs. All right, some good advice there. <laughs> you can see the massive trucks up close, meet your favorite drivers and crews. 
of course, get the autographs and take some photos. It's not too late to go ahead and buy your tickets. The fun does start at 6 p.m. Again, this is tomorrow. Well, for more information, go to fox17.com. And in just a matter of hours, Live Golf will tee off for the first time ever here in Middle Tennessee. This is the party golf tournament <laughs> that will happen <laughs> at the Grove in Williamson County. Yeah, it's over in Franklin. It's about a 45 minute drive from Nashville. If you're new here, maybe you're visiting for the weekend. Good morning. Live golf, though, is very, very different from the PGA. There are no cuts, so everyone stays throughout the tournament. But that's not all because Live also features team competitions, music. Organizers say it's more like a festival. We actually have about 150 to 200 speakers around the entire course plays music throughout the entire tournament. Do you wonder how the golfers can stay focused with all that music? Right? I guess I, I just uh, tune it out. I don't know. Zone hmm. in. Maybe that's Lock why we're, in. we're news anchors and not professional golfers. <laughs> right. Hey, by the way, uh, just like Monster Jam, there are still some tickets available for Live Golf. Uh, it does look like they've got some openings on Sunday for tickets. All right. If you want to get out there in the heat, enjoy. Talking about golf, though, Charlie Woods, the 15-year-old son of Tiger Woods, earned his way into his first USGA Championship. Wednesday, he had the leading score among qualifiers for the U.S. Junior Amateur next month at Oakland Hills. Tiger Woods was 14 when he qualified for his first U.S. Junior. Wow, reaching the semifinals. He won his first U.S. Junior amateur event a year later at Bay Hills in 19 holes and is the only player to win the U.S. Junior three straight times. By the way, for this particular event, you have to be under the age of 19. So Tiger Woods done well in that range, 15 years old, and at least when it comes to golf, looks to be following in his dad's footsteps. For sure. Hey, steer clear traffic. We've had something come to our attention. We want to bring it to yours right now. We look to have some construction that's going on. I-24 at Salem Pike down in Murfreesboro. Uh, now, yes, perhaps con some construction, but as we take a closer look here, we want to make sure we don't have an issue in the construction zone because we can see a big tanker pulled off to the far right shoulder, and it does look to be blocking the entrance ramp to I-24 there at Salem Pike. Um, let me just, all right, Erica, we're gonna pull up the TDOT map here real quick while we take this live look, because I just wanna get a double check to see uh, if this is inbound to Nashville. Let me double check this right here. It is, it is inbound to Nashville, and it does look like it's causing a little bit of a backup in the outbound lanes as well. Greg, were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, it looks like from the construction that they're actually loading something from the construction site into that truck that's pulled off into the side of the road. Okay. So I do believe that that, that, that is part of the construction okay. point I just saw move in. Yeah, yeah, you were able to get a better view mm -hmm. of it over uh, in the Weather and Traffic Center for us. All right, so what they're loading, we're working to find out, but they got a lot of crews out there right now. We'll check on this, see if we can do a little digging in the commercial break and get you an update in just a couple minutes. And a weather update as well. We're leading into a weekend here. Many events. We talked about it. Live Golf. We have Monster Jam. We have the Western Kentucky State, State Fair. So many things happening and so much heat. We'll start breaking down all those events. 445 is the time. Nashville's tourism and hospitality industry, they are now creating a plan to balance the booming growth while also keeping locals in mind. And we hear from so many of you who wake up with us every morning who, you know, feel like Nashville's growing with uh, no concern for the folks who have to live uh -huh. and work here every day. Fox 17 News Madeline Nolan joining us live from Broadway this morning to share the details about the plan and Madeline's safety, cleanliness, big driving factors in this plan. Absolutely. If they can uphold those key factors and maintain that growth, it will benefit both the people that live here in Nashville as well as the tourists. Broadway, a great example of this. A destination for many all over the country and even the world. But over the last few years mentioned in the strategic plan, it has changed drastically, threatening the culture by homelessness, drug use, and overconsumption of alcohol. According to Dina Ivey, the president of Nashville, Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation. Part of the plan is to change that dynamic. It's like, what can we do as a city, you know, together? We have to work with the mayor's office. We have to work with the police department. We, we're working with all the different organizations. We can't control that as the CBC, but we can help advocate for it and we can help influence it. And that's part of what this plan is. 
Other focuses include making Nashville an attractive destination for international people. And then also these priorities, there's eight of them to make sure that Nashville continues to grow its tourism, but also in a good light. For now, live here on Broadway this morning, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you so much. Record travel is predicted next month for the 4th of July holiday, which is about 13 days away. It's going to exceed even pre-pandemic numbers. Fox Business correspondent Grady Trimble with more this morning. This 4th of July week is going to be one for the books for travel. AAA says almost 71 million Americans are going to travel somewhere over the entire week of 4th of July. That would be the most ever. The vast majority of those folks are going to go somewhere by car, but a record number will also get on a plane. Nearly 6 million people are expected to fly. That's up almost 7% from last year. And this comes at a time when there are difficulties in the air travel industry. The problems with Boeing, for one, have been making headlines for months now. On top of that, there's a threat from American Airlines flight attendants that they could go on strike. But flyers are not deterred. Part of the reason for that, airfare is down from last year. The travel booking app Hopper says domestic round trip tickets are down 18% this year compared to last. And if you're planning a big trip to Europe, those round trip tickets are down 37%. On top of all of that, a lot of customers are still choosing to spend money on experiences over things. For younger generations, this prioritization of travel expenditure, it's not just a post-pandemic trend. It's the way that they view their finances and discretionary spending, and they're going to continue to prioritize trips, vacations over things like buying homes, buying cars until they're much older. Hopper says we're seeing the rise of what they call bleisure travel, a combination of business and leisure. Since so many people can work remotely, they're choosing to do that in exotic locales. In Washington, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. Thanks so much in your community right now back here closer to home. The Metro Action Commission is offering free fans and AC units to certain people in need. If you are a senior citizen, maybe you have young children or you have a disability, you may qualify for help. You can sign up to get that help until August 30th. We have a link for it on our website right now, fox17.com. That is certainly going to come in handy this weekend as we talk about the hot temperatures. You did kind of lower the temperatures. I mean, kind of, sort of, a it, little bit. <laughs> we talk about how, you know, just the perspective of how you look at things is you're right. The numbers that are on the seven day are down by about a degree or two. The number of how it's going to feel goes up. Yeah, when humidity yes. goes up, it gets hard to get that hot outside. That's why the desert southwest can be 110 and with no humidity. Yeah. And it gets harder for us to hit 100. So we're still going to feel over it. You just won't see it on the seven days. So very, very good point there, Erica, that the humidity now looks even stronger than it did. That means it's going to be just really uncomfortable outside. Pool forecast today, 87 degrees at 10 o'clock, 94 degrees at 2, 94 degrees at 5 hot the entire day. So let's add in all the other, other variables at the pool, the heat index, the UV index, to see what we're working with today. 15 minutes for a burn time, not quite as bad as yesterday, but really not good. This is that time of the year when really the sun's just overbearing whenever you don't have a cloud in the sky. And even when you do have a cloudy afternoon, you can still get a sunburn even if the clouds stick around most of the day. The muggy meter here, I moved the arrow up just a little bit. We're getting very close to the oppressive category where it's almost uncomfortable just to walk outside even in the shade. That's how today is going to be. No air quality issues though, which is good. There's been a subtle breeze to help kind of kick things up a little bit. Pollen counts. Those have not moved whatsoever. So we're still in the medium to low medium category, which is good. And once again, grass and a few types of trees giving us some issues. But overall, we are in that stagnant part of the summer where there's not much of an influence when it comes to allergies and pollen outside. Maybe you're lighting up the barbecue later on today. This is the last day that will be in the lower 90s. We're talking about mid 90s to upper 90s the next couple of days. That even goes through 5 o'clock today. 94 at 5, down to 91 by 7. No rain during that time frame. However, we're trying to find a shower if we can. The best chance for that will be between about 1 a.m. and 4 p.m. And look at that. We had two specks of green. Don't count on rain today. And if you get a rain drop or two, it'll feel refreshing more than be a nuisance. Greg, thank you.
we had some time to figure out what's going on on I-24 down in Murfreesboro, and we figured it out. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the backup on I-24 down in Rutherford County. This is in Murfreesboro uh, near Highway 231. We've learned this backup is the result of construction. TDOT is doing some resurfacing work, and that is resulting in lane closures. This work is going to go through next Wednesday, so the 26th. There will be alternating lane closures on I-24 eastbound and westbound uh, right here in Murfreesboro. So would recommend this morning if you are waking up because this is impacting both inbound and outbound traffic for Murfreesboro. If you're waking up this morning, you may want to avoid I-24. This is technically supposed to be nighttime work, but they're still working on it this morning. And what we saw just a minute ago looked to be crews picking up what was left of some of the equipment and perhaps the stuff left out on the roads from that resurfacing. So that's what we're seeing right here right now. Hopefully this will clear up soon. We'll keep an eye on it for you and get another check on steer clear traffic in just a few minutes. In our economy, millions of borrowers are going to see their monthly student loan payments reduced starting next month in July. It is because of the Biden administration's biggest changes to the federal student loan system to date. The Biden administration's new repayment plan, known as saving on a valuable education, is going to be fully phased in this summer, again next month. And for most borrowers, the plan offers a lower monthly payment than other federal student loan repayment plans. It also will cancel student debt for some borrowers after they make as few as 10 years of payments. There are still, though, legal challenges to Biden's plans to cancel this student debt. Also in our economy, the days of pain at the pump may soon be behind us, but we're taking a closer look. May soon be behind us. Emphasis on May. <laughs> Gay price, or gas prices rather are expected to fall by as much as 10% in the coming weeks. Economic experts say domestic demand and supply conditions, they have improved. Gas prices likely peaked back in mid-April at the high of 367 per gallon. AAA says the average cost of a gallon of regular gas is now $3.44. The average here in Tennessee, though, is $3.01. Still too much, right? I mean, if we're yep. paying almost $4 a gallon for gas, that's too high for everybody. We all want to save money. So we're going to try to make it easy here for you to find the lowest gas prices in your area. What you're looking at here is straight from our website, fox17.com. We have our fuel gauge there. And when you go to the fuel gauge, it'll show you the gas prices all around the mid-state. I'm going to show you some of the cheaper prices. Essentially, if you have to fill up, try to do it north of Nashville, right? We've got 283 over here. If you're going out toward maybe uh, Ashland City, we've got 287 uh, right up here near the Grand Ole Opry. I'm seeing 299 in Madison. I know it gets cheaper as you go up toward um, Hendersonville. We've got uh, 285 uh, north of Nashville, uh, kind of in the up toward the Whites Creek area. Here's where you don't want to fill up. All right, I'm going to show you where you don't want to go. Look at Green Hills, Bell Mead, 359. Look at Nashville proper, 352, right here in the heart of downtown, just over to the west side. Look out toward Bellevue, out toward Bellevue, we've got 340, 329. Um, so for sure, if you uh, if you have to fill up and maybe you can uh, find yourself Nashville or north, you're going to pay a little bit less. And in some cases, I would say, I mean, if we've got 283 here, but 359 down here, that's a pretty good difference. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. It is 457. I know sometimes, you know, your day can start out a little rough, even Fridays. <laughs> uh, but today could be a little bit easier if you can bring your dog to work today. It is national. Take your dog to work day. I like this holiday. It's been celebrated, if you didn't know this, since back in 1999. Mm. The day also really seeks to encourage folks to get out there to their local animal shelter and adopt. You can celebrate by sharing photos over on our social media platforms of your pet. Use the hashtag National Take Your Dog to Work Day. And I'd love to see your dogs at work with you. Oh, I'd love that. I know. I told Erica, I said, oh, gosh, I wish I'd known this sooner. I would have. Maybe brought Ace. Well, He's I don't, little enough. I don't think our dogs will be quiet throughout the entire newscast. Obi would. 
Obi would be good. I, I, I was telling Greg, <laughs> we're talking to him just a minute. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it was this day last year that Obi came to visit. She, yeah, she, she kind of sneak attacked us towards the end of the show. It was precious. Hey, also, we going on here? Greg, check this out. I know this is uh, right up your alley. A group of Star Wars fans meeting up in Mexico City to participate in the Jedi Knight Academy. Huh. Why am I here right now at 4 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> well, I could be in Mexico playing with lightsabers. We could have got on, you a quick, a quick flight. It does yeah, look pretty cool. It does. Three hour long class. Three hours. Yeah. It teaches all kinds of techniques when it comes to how to Stop. use a lightsaber. Stop. Really? I use it for good. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go get a lightsaber. Some people do go Lightsaber? Some people bring... have lightsaber combat. I said saber. Each their own. <laughs> Don't try to play me like I that. I could use a little juicy <laughs> piece of candy right now. Lightsabers. Ooh. Lifesavers. I see what I, I, I think there's some in the break room, Jan. I'll go check for you. Take a look here. <laughs> Maybe you're wanting to go out to the, to the Live Golf Tournament this weekend. You got your tickets, you're ready to go. You got to know what you're getting into. Temperatures are not going to be great for us here. I've lowered the numbers a bit, but the feels likes are up. 95 degrees this afternoon, 98 degrees on Saturday and on Sunday. Breaking down today, just today. Feels like temperature of 101 degrees. The shotgun start where all of the players tee off at the same time is going to be at 1215. Everything wraps up by about 6 p.m. But the entire afternoon going to be hot. And that peak feels like temperature of 101. That's going to be between noon and 5 p.m. Right now, check this out. The Nashville Zoo proud to announce the birth of another hog. Piglet. Oh my goodness, she Beautiful was born thing. to her mother, Tater. Yes, I said Tater. And can you guess what her name is? Well, I could guess. It's Tot. Tater Tot. Look at that little thing. This is the second Red River hog birth over at the Nashville Zoo. So if you're visiting the zoo, maybe today or over the weekend, you can see Tot at the <laughs> HCA Healthcare Veterinary Center. She can also be seen live through the nursery camera. You can That's check cute. in on Tot. We've requested that Tot and uh, Tater make a, a visit here to the studio. We don't know whether they'll do that. National Bring Your Red River Hog to Work Day. If it's your pet, I hey, guess so. There you go. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Five o'clock on the dot right now. Crime in our community. So many neighbors have said enough is enough and they're taking their concerns their demands for change straight to leaders in their communities. We'll tell you who's doing what new on this Friday morning. And one of those spots is right here in Brentwood where there is a town hall involving what Jen was just talking about last night. We'll bring you the message from the community. Thank you so much for joining us here on a Friday morning. We made it. Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Erica Glover. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. Let's take a look at the top few stories making headlines right now that you'll want to know about before you walk out the door. And we begin with former President Trump, who will get the final word when he debates President Biden in a CNN uh, debate coming up Thursday. A coin flip determines the podium placement and the order of closing statements. The Biden campaign won the coin toss and chose the right podium position. Trump's campaign then chose for the former president to deliver the last closing statement. We're also covering international headlines. The sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is threatening to retaliate after South Korean activists flew balloons carrying propaganda leaflets and trash across the border. Well, that threat does come one day after South Korea's military says they fired warning shots at North Korean soldiers who briefly crossed the border for the third time this month. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula, though, have been increasing ever since Russia and also North Korea went ahead and signed a pact promising mutual aid if either is attacked. Back here at home, we go to Galveston, Texas. Parts of Galveston underwater this morning after the first named Atlantic storm of the season makes landfall. This is Alberto. The video showing houses surrounded by water, streets that are flooded. Alberto making landfall in Mexico first, uh, where we do have deaths confirmed in Mexico. Uh, no deaths reported so far this morning in Texas, but we do know Governor Abbott has declared a state of emergency. 5.02 is the time we're checking in because so much is happening with golf. The full moon uh, picking is happening tonight. So is the weather going to cooperate? 
it's going to cooperate. It's just going to be hot. Um, we're not going to have to worry about rain or thunderstorms to get in our way, but definitely going to be hot this entire first weekend of summer. And limited rain chances will be out there, but those will all be during the afternoons, right during that peak heating of the day. So everything early in the morning looks great, and everything, I would say, dinner time on looks great as well. And when I mean limited, I mean very limited. Limited edition rain chances here. Or maybe one or two, you can get a shower, and that's pretty much it. Still aiming for 100 degree feels like temperatures going into the weekend. Sun's starting to come up here. Again, very long with our daylight. What's going to happen between now and the first week of July is our sunset will stay right where it's at, if not get one or two minutes later. But our sun rises become later as well. That's how we shrink our daylight. We start by doing it in the first half of the day. We're all clear when it comes to code red, just drier and hotter leading to the weekend and the humidity is also ramping up. Here's your seven day forecast and yep, 95 degrees temperature today. Right side of your screen, your current temps are right there. Beautiful looking sunrise for you here this morning too. We'll bring you some images of that as the sun does officially rise in about 15 minutes and then upper 90s Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Much more to break down about the upcoming weekend and your code forecast. Greg, thank you so much at 504. Let's do a quick check of your steer clear traffic. The good news is the resurfacing project that was happening here in Murfreesboro, I-24 at Salem Pike, this is clearing out. So the roads are back open, but we're still seeing a backup. Okay, it's going to be inbound. If we can get another look at the other side where the backup is, I was trying to click on over to get the other side here. We'll show you where that backup is happening. So do keep in mind, this is I-24 over in Murfreesboro. It's the Rutherford County backup that might slow you down over here. So we're not seeing it right now. We'll give you another look though we'll check in with your steer code traffic update in a in a minute i promise there is backup but again the resurfacing effort that has since cleared out we have an uptick in violence that's left a lot of people frustrated in brentwood where they had a meeting overnight to address some concerns and it's worth noting listen brentwood is a place that historically has very low crime. Yeah, that's very true. Fox 17 News' Johnny Maffey is joining us live outside of the library in Brentwood with more on what that meeting, uh, what came with that meeting, I should say. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Erica and Jen. So what we learned last night was Claire Jones, who's a state house candidate, was uh, she was hosting what they called a town hall last night right here at the Brentwood Library. And a lot of people, they're frustrated about gun violence going on, including with the Covenant shooting. Also, back in 2018, the Waffle House shooting over in Antioch. So both survivors and victims of those shootings uh, and other people affected as well were talking to the people in the audience about all of it. And one message is they want state leaders to do more for victims and survivors and also take measures to, well, prevent these things from happening or at least have the discussion. Now, Sarah Shoup Newman, she's a covenant parent who says families need more resources. Otherwise, the problem, well, it's going to get worse. We caught up with her to ask what she thinks has been of what's been going on at the state house. It's been disappointing. I think we saw a lot of great proposals that did not seem controversial and it just seemed like a lot of things were shot down without getting a fair chance to even be heard um, from gun violence to free school lunches to healthcare things. And it, it was just really disappointing to see that those discussions weren't even gonna be had. And so Shoup Newman adds that if you can't have that conversation while well, she's losing faith in humanity. Coming up at 5.30 right here on Fox 17 News this morning, we're going to hear from one of the survivors of the 2018 Waffle House shooting who's had dozens of surgeries. Live this morning in Brentwood, I'm Johnny Matthew, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Johnny, thank you. And we are hearing from judges for the first time now on the debate over low bond here in Tennessee. This is a story that we've been following for months now. More repeat offenders, free, on bond, waiting for their trials, committing more crimes. And now we're hearing from judges. Take a look at the video here. During a panel held by the Tennessee Voices for Victims yesterday, local judges went ahead and they made a point to say we need to figure out who to hold accountable. And they say it shouldn't just be them. They say they can only go by what is presented in court by defense attorneys. And we're still hearing from both sides. Defense attorneys say they ask for bond with what they feel is appropriate. Nancy King is the mother of a victim who was shot in Green Hills by a repeat offender. Nancy King says that she feels prior convictions have not been looked at closely enough. I hope you support the local judges and legislators in pushing through bond reform. I'm sorry it had to hit me so close to home, close to home before I started paying attention to support the needs of victims. 
Now, everyone who showed up at last night's panel discussion agreed that yes, change must happen. In 11 days, there will be a new law to help stop the problems that have been connected to repeat offenders. So that will happen July 1st. We'll keep an eye on that for you and let you know whether we start to see change. Well, coming up on Fox 17 News this Friday morning, new charges for a woman accused of killing her daughter in East Tennessee. What her defense team is now arguing. And we've been following the situation down in Murfreesboro for you this morning. This is a live look, I-24 at Shelbyville Highway. This is the backup as a result of overnight and early morning construction work. They're repa repaving, TDOT is repaving both directions of I-24 near uh, Highway 231. So the backup that you're seeing here is Murfreesboro and south or east. So if you are Welcome back. 511 is the time and right now in Operation Crime and Justice, an East Tennessee mother accused of killing her 15th month old, 15 month old daughter is now facing new charges. And you may remember this story. She was arrested four years ago regarding the disappearance and death of her toddler named Evelyn Boswell. Well, now she is back in the courtroom and right now we're showing you some looks and giving you some updates. Megan Boswell now faces 20 counts, including felony murder. Now, because of the attention this case is getting, her attorney is asking the court to go ahead and relocate her trial to another city. Let's go ahead and listen to some of the discussion from inside the courtroom. There shouldn't be a rush to judgment in this case. There, no evidence has been presented yet. Yet, I have people text me, talk to me and, about their thoughts that she's guilty. We're rescheduling, but uh, we're going to have the hearing and we're slowly but surely making our way to trial in February. Well, a judge is now set to hear arguments on relocating the trial August 15th. Keep in mind, back in April, Governor Bill Lee signed Evelyn's Law, which increased penalties for parents or guardians who do not report their children missing within 48 hours. Sun is coming up and temperatures are already climbing going into the weekend. The humidity can already be felt. First weekend of summer, how close to 100 will be coming up in your forecast. In Fox 17 News, of course. Hey there, good morning, and welcome back into Fox 17 News this morning. 515 right now, and a live look on Lower Broadway. Quiet now, but we got a lot going on in Nashville this weekend. We have uh, Alanis Morissette. We have Smokey Robinson Ooh. at a couple of different venues here in Nashville for the weekend. Um, things are looking good, nice and quiet. Just if you're going to be outside or downtown, maybe honky tonking with your friends. Make sure you stay hydrated uh, and stay safe out there. Uh, so many events here I mentioned in Music City. The Academy of Country Music has now, in fact, named Bridgestone Arena their Arena of the Year. Bridgestone has won this award six other times. I think it's fitting. Well, hey, talking about everything going on, let's continue that topic. Fox 17 News now getting some more updates this more Friday morning about a story we first talked about yesterday. A lot of tourism, new numbers though. Oh yeah, and now we're diving deeper into the numbers and what those numbers mean for our community, especially for folks like us who live here and work here and raise our families here. Let's send it out to Fox 17 News reporter Madeline Nolan. She joins us live this morning in the heart of downtown Nashville, uh, talking about the record tourism numbers and how the city is trying to balance that tourism with folks who live and work here. Yeah, that's exactly right. In the past, city leaders have focused on growing Music City, but now that we have gotten there, it's now all about making sure that they can sustain that growth while also upholding the culture of Nashville. And as we all know, Nashville is a huge economic engine. According to the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, they say visitor growth is expected to grow more than 21 million people in 2034. Now, one key factor of the plan is changing the way people view Nashville, especially Broadway, something the CBC mentions in their eight part strategic plan is how Broadway has drastically changed over the years from something that used to celebrate Nashville's culture now threatened by alcohol overconsumption, brawling and drug use. One of the new programs that we just introduced is called Push Pause and it's come play Music City, have a good time, have fun, don't overdo it. And, you know, the Riley Strain thing is a great example of that. It's like we want people to have a good time. We want them to enjoy the music, but we don't want them to lose their best judgment. 
The plan has been in the works for over two years, taking input from nearly 100 city leaders. Other focuses include drawing in both international visitors and big events, while also working with the police to keep it both safe and clean. Now, you can read more about the strategic plan. You can visit our website at fox17.com for all of that. For now, though, live here on Broadway this morning, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. All right, hot, humid, hazy, all the things. I had a conversation yesterday with our son, Greg, and Erica. We were talking about electrolytes, mm -hmm. right? Because we talk all the time about stay hydrated. Yes. Um, and we were talking about the difference between drinking water and sweating it all out, especially mm -hmm. if you're playing sports outside, and electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like maybe that would be a good little thing for you to talk about later this morning. Sure, why not? I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, no, we're very honestly, specific. Yeah. You right. know, like, well, because we were, I was saying to him, I was like, okay, you're outside, you're playing baseball, and it's 100 degrees. Yes. You need more than water. Yes. Well, and to your point, talking about electrolytes, I was doing some more digging about parents who they think it's good to give electrolytes perhaps to younger children, mm. but that's not always a good case because of the sugar and the ingredients mm -hmm. because they're outside. So here, okay. let's just have a little family talk. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Later. Electrolyte talker coming okay. up. Yep. <laughs> Order coming your way later this morning, Jen. Taking a look here uh, right now. Just wash or wait. That's what we're starting off here. The outdoor activities, I would say you can wash all three days. There will be isolated pop-ups that are out there. Maybe a stray shower or two. But for the most part, you can do it. You're going to be fine. The, the rain chances don't pick up until very late in the weekend and then going into next week. So we've been doing this all week. I've been talking about it all week. And hopefully you've been listening and your garden and your plants are looking good. 81 degrees at 9 a.m., 92 at noon, and 94 degrees at 3 p.m. What that means is with the very small chance for any rainfall in the next few days, we're still watering by ourselves. The timeline has not changed. Most of the day, you don't want to do it because of how strong the sun rays are this time of the year. I would say 7, 8 o'clock, even 9 a.m., still not that bad. After that, turn off the hose. Do not do anything until after dinner time, right before sunset, which is going to be at 8 o'clock, and then you'll be good. You might think, why am I not watering during the middle of the day when it's hot outside? We want to drink water when it's hot out. Well, putting water into soil, a lot of it evaporates before the plants can actually end up using that water, and it may end up hurting your plants more than it helps them. So just keep that in mind. 74 degrees right now. I got one hand in my pocket for the council that's going to be in at Bridgestone Arena. We just mentioned who it is. Lance Moore's second to be there. Take a look. Uh, just a couple clouds. That's pretty much all we've got this morning, and there they are. I'm getting out of the way. That's a much better picture than I am. Look at that beautiful sunrise over Metro Center. And our sunset going to be at 8.07 again, one of the longer days we're going to see here. Every day we see a little less daylight going all the way to right around Christmas time. 95 degrees today, upper 90s Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. All four of those days, including today, really are going to feel at or above 100 degrees during the peak heating during the afternoon hours. Greg, thank you. 5.20 is the time. Let's also check in on your street clear traffic up. And take you near the airport, always busy as we head into a weekend. So here you go, I-40 over at Donaldson Pike. You see construction on the side, mm -hmm. on the shoulders. Okay, that's not impacting traffic right now. You can see for yourself, this area out near the airport is clear. But we'll continue checking in on all of your steer clear traffic updates. A lot of folks are flying in perhaps for live happening over in Franklin. Yeah. So we'll share all those updates for you. Keep you in the know. It's 521 right now. National headlines to kick off your Friday. The Treasury Department is taking actions to combat the opioid crisis. You might be wondering, what does the Treasury Department have to do with opioid crisis? Well, we're going to make the connection. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen had a news conference to talk about sanctions against several Mexican criminal organizations. This comes as cartels have been trafficking fentanyl and other illegal drugs into our country. Treasury's sanctions target kingpins and their support networks who seek to exploit our financial system to traffic narcotics. An executive order strengthen our ability to go after drug trafficking organizations, their enablers, and their financial facilitators. And over the past two years, Treasury has sanctioned more than 250 targets for involvement in drug trafficking, trafficking activities. Now, once again, there are leaders who say this opioid crisis continues to impact parts of America. We'll continue tracking all the implications and changes on the way. And Fox 17 News giving you updated looks this morning at the damage left behind from Alberto. This is a look in Texas. 
We'll take a closer look at what's happened in Galveston and also a look at the damage in parts of Mexico. Nearly 22 million children living in America rely on schools for their meals. Fox 17 News and our parent company, Sinclair Broadcasting, are partnering with Fe Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Investigations continue right now after a recycling facility in North Nashville caught fire yesterday afternoon. You might have seen the smoke from this North Nashville. Uh, the Nashville Fire Department able to pretty quickly get this out, though, and nobody got hurt, but they're still trying to figure out what caused that fire. Well, parts of Galveston, Texas are currently dealing with some bad situations. They're underwater parts of areas are after the first named Atlantic storm of the season made its impact. We now know at least four people died due to the storm over in Mexico. All right, so let's take a closer look now at Galveston, Texas. This is aerial footage of that coastal town home surrounded by water on all sides. Uh, this is the result of Tropical Storm Alberto, the governor of Texas issuing a disaster declaration. Alberto made landfall in Mexico early Thursday morning and has now for the most part fizzled out. But those folks, um, you know, in Galveston, I mean, Greg, we can talk a little bit about it, but Galveston typically prepared for this kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, hurricane season activity, if you will. Yeah, that they are. I mean, th this is not their first time by any means where they're going to deal with something like this. Thankfully, it's not as bad as it could be, but this is just the first of what's going to end up being, uh, un unfortunately, a very busy season out there in the Gulf and the Atlantic. Our first name storm, but I do not... I'm not going to be surprised when we get more and more names that do pop up. There's thanks to a shift in the global weather pattern over the last couple of weeks. 95 degrees here back home. We're trying to find some rain. The mugginess is going up, so that will help us potentially pop up a shower later today, tomorrow, or into Sunday. But really, rain chances are at a bare minimum here. Sunset going to be at 8.07, and we're actually going to see a later sunset a week from now, even though we're losing daylight. We lose our daylight in the morning hours until the first week of July. Take a look. Let's try to find some green. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's it. A spot or two on the radar during the afternoon can't be ruled out. Other than that, just on and off cloud cover. The mugginess will be felt. We're going to feel like we're at nearly 100 degrees. Here's tomorrow at 1, almost the exact same time, one or two green specks. That is all we have to work with, unfortunately, in the forecast coming up for the upcoming weekend. Temperatures are going to be on the hot side. Take a look. We'll be at 98 on Saturday and Sunday with the heat index value. Upwards of triple digits. That means greater than 100 degrees. National headlines right now. The White House wants to bring back a program for Gold Star families to be able to honor their fallen loved ones buried abroad. Um, the Biden administration working with the American Battle Monuments Commission to reinstate this program. It allowed Gold Star families to buy flowers to have them placed on their fallen service members' graves at U.S. military cemeteries abroad. But it ended nearly a decade ago. It is now, though, expected to be included in the coming budget year that's going to start in October. Steer clear traffic this morning takes us to the backup that still is kind of persistent uh, out there near Murfreesboro. What you're looking at here is the backup due to earlier morning construction in Murfreesboro at I-24 and Highway 231. The backup is at Joe B. Jackson Parkway. So the construction has cleared, the backup remains. This is primarily going to impact you if you get on I-24 at Joe B. Jackson Parkway, or if you are waking up with us this morning down in Beach Grove and you come into Nashville on I-24, the detour would be Highway 41. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Right now on Fox 17 News This Morning, the man you see here on your screen charged in a carjacking while he was out on bond. Yes, another case of someone here in Tennessee being out on bond connected to another crime. How a police chase ends with this guy in the hospital. And gun violence survivors and advocates coming together talking about stopping violence across Middle Tennessee. What they want lawmakers to consider as they move forward. Waking up here to a sunrise and mugginess that is already slightly abrasive. We'll take a look at how strong the UV index is going to be today. And we'll talk about near triple digit heat index values for your weekend. All right, thanks for waking up with us here on a Friday morning. For Fox 17 News, I'm Erica Glover. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. This half hour, we have a man free on bond and wanted for robbery arrested. 
after police say he led them on a chase in a stolen SUV and got hit in traffic on I-65. And yes, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is another case of someone here in the Mid-State being out on bond accused of committing another crime. So let's take a look at the details here. Metro Police telling us that detectives spotted a black Nissan Rogue that had been taken during a Mapco robbery back on June 10th. This is 49 year old Cornelius Pierce who took off in that SUV. Well, as he drove out of Davison County, a Metro Police officer tracked him in a helicopter. Franklin and Brentwood Police then stopping the car on I-65 North by using spike strips. Police say Pierce got out, jumped over the divider wall onto I-65 South and may have tried to carjack another vehicle, but that car ultimately hit him. Mm. Pierce was then taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Once he's out, he's going to face a lot of charges as well as being out on bond at the time of the June Mapco robbery. So you can bet we're going to follow up because mm -hmm. we want to know what will the new bond be? Will he get bond at all? Uh, we'll follow that part of the story for you. Just a conversation. That is what folks in Brentwood who are concerned about crime are asking of lawmakers to have a conversation. We're now learning what one community, though, is calling for after a town hall. It was over at the Brentwood Library. Yeah, and Brentwood, not typically a place where we see a lot of crime, but uh, the folks living there want to stop it before it gets any worse. That's where we find Fox 17 News. Johnny Maffey live this morning. Johnny, let's talk about the overall message. Well, Jen and Erica, one of the messages was, like you guys just said right there, they want to open up the conversation and actually have that conversation, whether it be with lawmakers or others on opposite, opposite sides of the aisle as them. And another one of those messages was uh, they want survivors and victims of some of these crimes to get more resources, and that's exactly what they're calling on state lawmakers for, especially uh, we heard from some victims and survivors and family members uh, of people involved with the Covenant shooting as well as the 20. 18 Waffle House shooting. Now, Sarita Henderson was there. She's a survivor of that Waffle House shooting back in 2019. She's gone through a couple dozen surgeries after being shot multiple times back then and says it's been a gruesome six years. It wasn't just me. Um, there are other victims and survivors and their families, and we've all tried to come together and find some sort of normalcy and some sort of direction. Um, for us, unfortunately, there was no direction. Um, resources were not available for us in ways that we needed them to be, and we had to figure them out on our own. And Claire Jones, who is a candidate for the Nashville State House, uh, she put on this event. She hosted this town hall and says Tennessee the, has the seventh highest rate of gun violence and wants to see a change. Live this morning in Brentwood, I'm Johnny Matthew, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Our weather story here on a Friday morning takes us into a very humid first weekend of summer. We're going to have feels like temperatures today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday at or above 100. That's how it's going to be. Actual air temperature likely does not hit 100, but the feels like to your body with that heat humidity combo, it's going to be up there all four, if not five of those days in a row. Heat does remain into next week. That's not going away. It'll drop off a little bit toward the middle of the week when storm chances go up. For right now, a pop up shower or weak storm is the best we can do in the next two or three days. So most of us are going to stay dry. Camera, can we get a little action here? Thank you. There we go. Right on cue. I like how that worked. Take a look. Sun is up. We're going to see a good deal of it. A few on and off clouds this morning and this afternoon, right side of your screen. Our current temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. We get that quick climb through the 80s early in the morning and take our way up to the 90s later on this afternoon. What we are tracking here is that heat index. We'll take a look at each day and how far above 100 degrees it could be for your weekend. 536 right now, steer clear traffic time. Uh, things are still backed up uh, Murfreesboro and then southeast. So if you're coming in this morning from places like Christiana and you would typically get that on 24, uh, I would just say maybe don't do that this morning. <laughs> We've got a, a bit of a backup and looking at another view this morning. Uh, that is giving us a little bit something else here. I'm going to look and see uh, if I can figure out this location. I do believe this is Joe Jackson. So we've got what's left of that construction zone we were mentioning earlier this morning on I-24 and still having that impact because for whatever reason, uh, we've got police 
maybe they're about to get out of position here, but we did have police blocking off that far right lane. So again, waking up this morning out there in Rutherford County you may want to jump on 41 is your best detour for now. No other problems in steer clear traffic. So that's the great news. If you're waking up with us and the rest of the mid state, we have no other problems right now out there on the roads. Well, coming up after Nashville based change healthcare was hit by a cyber attack months ago. The company has started to reach out talking about who might have been impacted. We're going to explain this one. And later this welcome back 540 is the time change healthcare says that they're starting to go ahead and notify hospitals and insurers impacted by a massive cyber attack that happened earlier this year back in February. So now we're getting some more updates and knowing uh, what exactly was impacted. The Nashville based company is part of United Health Group and they do submit and process insurance claims. Well, back in February, they were the target of a ransomware attack that may have exposed names addresses, health insurance, and some personal information. The company says it will begin notifying individuals or patients in late July. The company also said this is worth noting that so far there is no evidence that doctor charts or full medical histories were stolen, but more updates could be coming. We're going to check in now for your Friday and weekend forecast. We made it. We made it, Greg. <laughs> we made it, but now we got to get through it. Okay. <laughs> That's how it's going to be as far as the weather goes. And this is not because of severe weather. This is just the heat, the continued strenuous heat for us here. And I mean strenuous, just trying to do any outdoor activity is getting tougher and tougher. We've had nine days that have hit 90 degrees. Today will be day number 10. Tomorrow and Sunday will be 11 and 12, and we'll keep it going into next week. And the heat index will be very elevated compared to even yesterday. The muggy, this is, mugginess is felt right now. We're going to feel like we're at or above 100 degrees today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and possibly even Tuesday. The air conditioner deserves a little overtime paycheck which you're going to have to pay through your electric bill, unfortunately, because we're not seeing anything going away now. Know this going into the weekend that the air conditioner is only designed to cool your single home to 20 degrees cooler than outside. So when we're at 98 degrees, it may not get you cooler than the mid to upper 70s. It's not broken. That's just not designed for 100 degree heat. Giving us those AC updates. Greg, thank you so much. 541 is the time. Let's check in now for your steer clear traffic updates. We have been tracking TDOT's paving efforts all morning long. Do want to take you here south of Murfreesboro. This is I-24 at Joby Jackson, and you can see one lane there. It is a little bit of a slowdown in this area, so do be mindful of that. Keep in mind, too, that the repaving activities from TDOT is continuing on until next week. They're going to be busy doing that until Wednesday. It's 8 p.m. to 5 a.m., but it still does cause some delays as you continue on throughout this morning. Coming up, a toddler stuck inside a Tesla in a baking hot Arizona area because the car's battery died. We're going to hear more from her grand grandmother and how they had to get rescue crews involved for this situation. Good morning and welcome back into Fox 17 News this morning. It is 545. In case you missed it yesterday, actor Donald Sutherland has passed away. So well known for various roles. The legendary film and TV star died at the age of 88, appeared in countless films for more than 60 years. Think, uh, think back to the TV series MASH. Yes. Yeah, we had the movie The Hunger Games and Animal House, just to name a few. He is survived by his five children, including actor Kiefer Sutherland, mm -hmm. his wife and four grandchildren. I did not know that was his son. Oh, yeah. Until yesterday, yeah. I watched side by side interviews. I know some folks were like, of course, that's his son. Mm -hmm. uh, 546 right now. Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona and a wild story that could serve as a lesson to anybody anywhere. Firefighters had to rescue a toddler who was trapped inside a Tesla. The reason the baby was trapped, the battery died and the doors locked with the baby inside. This is so scary. So the grandmother was trying to take her granddaughter on a short trip to the zoo, but right after securing her granddaughter into the car seat, she says that her Tesla locked with her toddler inside. And I closed the door, went around the car, get in the front seat, and my car was dead. I could not get in. My phone key wouldn't open it. My card key wouldn't open it. Okay, wow. so when the Tesla battery operates, when it dies, there is a hidden latch on the driver's side armrest that will unlock the door manually. Yeah, but in this case, she was not in the car. She was outside of the car, so she couldn't get to that little latch on the driver's side arm. Um, thankfully, uh, the baby 
was safe at the time, but let's listen to how the story continued. When they got here, the first thing they said to me is, oh, to Tesla, we can't get in these cars. Mm. And I said, I don't care if you have to cut my car in half. Just get her out. Right, obviously. Golly. So Miss Sanchez says that she wants Tesla to add a better option to get into a car with a dead battery if you're not in it at the time. Let's All see right. if that, that sparks any change. Well, back here at home, we're once again talking about Nashville's buzzing tourism industry. There are now hospitality leaders who are trying to create a plan to balance the booming growth mm -hmm. with also meeting all of our demands from locals who say we live here yeah. and we want better options too. Absolutely. Fox 17 News reporter Madeline Nolan joining us live on Lower Broadway. Absolutely, and if they can make sure that those key factors don't get in the way of, you know, the growth, well, it will benefit, of course, the tourists, but also the people that call Nashville home. Broadway here, great example of that. A destination place for many all over the country, but even the world. Over the last few years, however, mentioned in the strategic plan, it has changed drastically, threatening the culture by homelessness, drug use, and overconsumption of alcohol. According to Dina Ivey, the president of the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, part of the plan is to change that dynamic. It's like, what can we do as a city, you know, together? We have to work with the mayor's office. We have to work with the police department. We, we're working with all the different organizations. We can't control that as the CBC, but we can help advocate for it and we can help influence it. And that's part of what this plan is. Other focuses include making Nashville an attractive destination for international tourists, ensuring people that ha have access to diverse hospitality offerings, and again, supporting citywide public safety efforts. Now, there's eight priorities that focus on making sure that Nashville continues to grow, but not in a bad light. Now, you can visit our website to see that full eight document, and um, that is going to be on fox17.com. For now, though, Live here on Broadway this morning, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. Not a lot of folks on lower Broadway right now, but that's certainly not going to be the case. Oh, in about, I don't know, three hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you didn't say 12 because we all know that as soon as lunchtime uh, hits, yeah. And the crowds change throughout the day, too. Like if they you're sure visiting, do. visit at different times throughout the weekend, you'll see a whole different kind of group of people. That is for sure. And today we have a dog of the day here that... Our director in back is going to recognize very well. This is her little doggo right there. We got Ali, and if she can get in my ear right now, that is a birthday ribbon on the Ollie. Uh, on Ali, Chris. So cute, sweet baby. Yes. Oh, birthday back in September. What a sweet pup right there. Our dog of the day, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be one of those mornings, just like the last couple. We're getting out there in the morning for the dog walk is going to be the best thing you can do because the afternoon's going to be tough or it's going to be rough. Yeah, I made the pun again. 77 degrees by 8 o'clock, 81 at 9 a.m. So our temperatures actually get warmer, slower for the morning hours, but then ramp up very quickly for the afternoon. The kicker is the humidity in the forecast for us today. Now the air temperature is going to hit right near 95. Again, I've been showing this about once or twice a morning, but I show it during different hours. So in case you haven't seen it, sidewalk temperature after just one or so minutes of the pause, maybe they're sitting quite literally like that, can start to burn the paw pads. And just think about it, if you put your hand on blacktop for a solid minute and don't let it move, at about 140 degrees, that's going to burn. There are times you, you step on just the concrete with your feet for a few seconds and it starts to hurt. So just keep that in mind. Also, we're back to car safety. Going into the afternoon, we're going to be in the upper 90s for tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Inside car temps, once that car's turned off, get up to about 130 degrees within the first 40 minutes. Greg, thank you so much. It's 551 right now. Stair clear traffic has actually looked real nice this morning. Uh, the only issues that we had for just a little bit uh, were over along I-24 uh, in Murfreesboro, but things are clearing up and looking pretty nice. Now, this is I-40 at the I-24 junction in downtown. I am noticing something here, not causing a huge backup yet, but we've got three cars in the zebra stripes where I-40 and I-24 split and merge right here near downtown. I am seeing a brake check as people approach this area. If this stays, we can have a real serious backup on our hands. So we'll keep an eye on this for you. Again, that's I-40 at the I-24 junction. Look how smooth sailing everything is on I-65 at Moore's Ooh. Lane in Brentwood.
looking I know. good. Nice and quiet here to start your Friday morning. Now to a health news update about lower back pain. It's terrible and more than one, well they say more than 600 million people, wow, are impacted by lower back pain. I'm one of them. Me too. I, Eric and I joke every morning, y'all probably don't realize this, but these chairs that we sit in, we have to climb up in every morning. I mean, it's, it's a whole thing and I always joke, these chairs are going to tweak our backs. Uh, anyhow, let's take a look at the study published in the Lancet Journal this week pointing to walking as one way to help ease lower back pain. Okay. Just go for a walk. Okay, researchers in Australia studied adults who had recently recovered from an episode of low back pain. One group was assigned to a program walking up to 30 minutes per day at least five days a week. The other group did not walk. The study found those who walked regularly went almost twice as long before lower back pain returned hmm. compared to those who didn't walk at all. So all we need to do is more exercise. Yeah, the thing is, we still have to climb back up in these chairs. So is it really helping <laughs> us? Probably not here. We just have to walk it out at home, I guess. Hey, uh, the IRS this morning says that more than half of the applications they received for one particular pandemic tax credit could be fraudulent. 556 is the time right now Fox 17 News showing you a live look at the Nashville skyline. We're trying to get it up for you. Here it is. It's hot. It's hazy. Jen uses all those words. You got another one? Steamy. Okay. Soupy. Yes. Thick. All right. <laughs> we can keep going. <laughs> Listen, it's going to be a hot weekend for sure, so stay hydrated. We're going to track your full forecast and get you ready for next week. If you're planning out your summer vacation, just stay with us. It's the air you can wear. Yes. So the IRS this morning says the vast majority of claims for the employee retention credit program are likely fraudulent. Now, this was the program that was created in March of 2020 to help businesses get through the pandemic. They got money if they turned in forms saying that they were still keeping people employed even if they were working from home. So the IRS investigated a million claims worth $86 billion and found upwards of 20% of those claims showed clear signs of being erroneous. Now that was their quote, but listen, these things were, were fake or fraudulent. Yeah, they also say they're going to be denied in the coming weeks and that another 60 to 70 percent are at an unacceptable risk of being improper and will be evaluated further. So that does leave about 10 to 30 percent of claims as not showing signs of being problems. Listen, the end result here is there were too many people and businesses during the pandemic taking advantage of all of these credits that you could you know, apply for. Uh, we've already seen several cases go through the court systems of, uh, of scammers, essentially. Yeah, trying to get over. Yeah, exactly. Hey, take a look at this. People gathering at the ancient stone circle of Stonehenge yesterday to mark the summer solstice in England. Yeah, so for Earth's northern hemisphere, it's the most daylight of the year. And the stone circle, well, it happens to align with the summer solstice sunrise and the winter solstice sunset. Look how pretty. It makes for some really fantastic video. Beautiful. Gorgeous stuff. So from here on out through the rest of the year, we start to lose just a little bit of daylight every day. Little, oh, you got to talk about that. We don't those vibes just, this morning. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, only <laughs> all, only a few seconds today though. But yeah, all the way through the third week of December, every day get every daylight just gets a little bit shorter, and then eventually the nighttime takes back over. But speaking of nighttime tonight. Look up at the sky. The full moon driving into work this morning was beautiful. It's a little bit bigger than it usually looks, too, because it's the lowest full moon we've had in years. You might think, well, what does that have to do with anything? The lower that the sun or the moon are along the horizon, it creates a little illusion where they look bigger. Beautiful strawberry moon, they call it, because this is the strawberry picking season. That's where it got its name from. But the official full moon at 8.08 .08 later on this evening. And as far as the forecast goes, well, you got big event happening this weekend. The Western Kentucky State Fair today, straight through the 23rd in Hopkinsville. Temperature is going to be in the low to mid 90s. Make sure we're taking all those heat precautions if we're heading out. Steer clear traffic time just about 559. So we're going to check in and see what's happening in Antioch. I-24 at Hickory Hollow, you can see right here on your screen, there are no issues. Really not a lot of brake checks out there for folks who are heading in for Friday. Maybe you're going to the airport or maybe you're heading into Nashville. Wherever you're heading out, if you're heading this way, you are looking good, giving you the green light. Across the nation right now, TSA agents at the Pittsburgh airport handled what could have been two explosive situations this week. There were two passengers who got stopped for trying to carry grenades through security. One man had 
an inert grenade in his bag. Those grenades don't explode, but do make a loud noise and are most certainly not allowed on flights. A different person had a smoke grenade in a carry on bag. Also, <laughs> what? Not allowed. No, folks, you cannot take any kind of grenade on a plane. No word yet on whether those travelers are going to face any consequences. Nope. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Now on Fox 17 News this Friday morning, a shooting over in Clarksville left one person dead and another severely injured. What we're learning so far. Plus we're live this morning in Brentwood after a town hall last night as community members are frustrated with some recent crimes. We'll bring you their message. And the first week of the summer is bringing the heat for us here. I've lowered the temperature, but I've upped the heat index feels like temps. We'll break them all down for you coming up in the forecast. All right, Greg, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us for Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Jennifer Waddell. Happy Friday. I'm Erica Glover. We're going to get started this Friday morning with updates from Clarksville. We now know one person is dead and another is in a Nashville hospital. This all happened after a shooting over in Clarksville. It happened at the home on Timberline Way yesterday afternoon where we could see a lot of police officers. This neighborhood uh, really uh, cordoned off with police tape here. When police got there, they found two people shot. One died at the home. First responders took the survivor uh, by life flight here to Nashville. That person we understand this morning is in critical condition. So one dead, one in critical condition. Police say they are still trying to put together exactly what happened here. We also have another update after a man who was shot in the head this weekend has now died. 19 year old Darwin Henriquez Perdomo was injured over in Nolansville Pike in a parking lot is where this all happened early Sunday and then dropped off at Southern Hills Medical Center by unknown person. Yeah, so an anonymous person just took him to the hospital and then left. If you know anything about what happened there again, this was uh, on Nolansville Pike in a parking lot. You were asked to call Crime Stoppers. You can stay anonymous and you might qualify for a reward of up to $5,000. An uptick in violence is leaving folks frustrated over in Brentwood and there was a meeting there just last night trying to address some ongoing concerns. We have our Fox 17 News reporter Johnny Maffey joining us live just outside the Brentwood Library this morning where this all went down. Get us up to speed on uh, what they decided overnight. Well, Jen and Erica, a state house candidate, uh, her name's Claire Jones. She started this town hall last night and she also moderated the discussion between a few panel members who have been affected or uh, work with victims and everything with uh, related to gun violence. And so one thing they're calling on state leaders to try to add more resources to help people, especially surrounding the Covenant shooting, as well as the 2018 Waffle House shooting that happened over in Antioch a few years ago. And they're also calling on the, uh, the state leaders to bring more resources because, well, if they don't now, well, then things would get worse. They also want to have a discussion with them as simple as that. Sarah Shoup Newman is a covenant parent who says families need more resources. Otherwise, that problem is going to get worse. And we caught up with her to ask what she thinks of what's been going on at the state house. It's been disappointing. I think we saw a lot of great proposals that did not seem controversial and it just seemed like a lot of things were shot down without getting a fair chance to even be heard um, from gun violence to free school lunches to healthcare things and it, it was just really disappointing to see that those discussions weren't even going to be had. And so Shoup Newman adds that, well, if you can't have the discussion, then she's losing faith in humanity. That's a quote from her last night. Now uh, coming up at 630 on Good Day, or excuse me, that was uh, <laughs> my old show, sorry. On Fox 17 News this morning, we're going to be hearing from a survivor from the 2018 Waffle House shooting. Live this morning in Brentwood, I'm Johnny Maffey, guys, back to you. 6 so far, time taking a look at what's new this morning in your weather world. And it's hard to find things that are new that are good, but we'll try our best. We've got the humidity that's gone up. Not so great. Uh, it's the first weekend of summer. That's good. That sounds nice to say at least, but a few pop up showers might be the one thing we can look forward to because anything that does arise when it comes to some rain and they're going to be really, really tiny, even if we get one or two of them during the afternoon, no severe weather. So the rain may actually cool you down a bit. A few raindrops on a really hot day can go a long way to add a little bit of comfort to the air locally. Taking a look this morning, any impact to our traffic when it comes to weather? We're not having any. We're dry to start. We had a few areas of patchy fog. Most of those are lifting as we speak. Not seeing any widespread visibility problems. Pop up shower for the afternoon. 
Can't rule it out. But that being said, we're going to go green light when it comes to any weather impact to your traffic this morning and also this afternoon. We're going to work you through a lot of events and a lot of fluctuations in how it feels outside for the upcoming weekend coming up in your COVID forecast. Greg, well, it feels good to tell you this. Your clear traffic is looking nice. Uh, we, I know, right? We'll take what we can get, uh, especially at 605 here. Take a look live, I-65 at the I-24 junction. This is just north of Nashville. As you are coming in, approaching Trinity Lane. This is one of our known congestion zones, and right now, looking really good. You've got the green light to get out and go. Matter of fact, we are currently crash-free in the mid-state. Right now, though, we do want to let you know about a silver alert that has been issued for a man missing out of Cumberland County. TBI is now searching for 80 year old Roger Phillips. Here's his photo right here and the truck believed to be involved. He was last seen Wednesday. TBI is reporting that Phillips is about 5 foot 11 with gray hair and blue eyes. He may also be wearing black jogging pants with a white stripe down the side and black shoes. TBI says he may be traveling in a 2010 Ford F-150 extended cab truck with a Tennessee tag 191BHKL. If you have any information as to where he could be, you are asked to call 1-800-TBI-FIND. 606 is your time and new charges for a woman accused of killing her daughter in East Tennessee. We'll tell you what her defense team is trying to argue. And we're talking about whether the first news this morning time right now is 608 in an operation crime and justice. The woman you see here on your screen with the black and white jail jumpsuit. That is Megan Boswell. She's from East Tennessee and she has been behind bars for four years awaiting trial in the disappearance and death of her 15 month old daughter Evelyn. Well, now she's facing new counts. Megan Boswell slapped with an additional first degree murder charge on top of 19 others because of the attention this case is getting. Her attorney is now asking the courts to relocate her trial to another city in Tennessee. There shouldn't be a rush to judgment in this case. There, no evidence has been presented yet. Yet I have people text me, talk to me and about their thoughts that she's guilty. We're rescheduling, but uh, we're, we're going to have the hearing and we're slowly but surely making our way to trial in February. All right, so a judge is set to hear arguments on relocating this trial coming up August 15th. I also want to point out that Evelyn Boswell, that 15 month old who died, her death led to Evelyn's law being established here in Tennessee, which raises the punishments for parents who don't report their children missing in a timely manner and then certainly harsher penalties uh, if they are found to be guilty of causing harm to their children. We have fire investigators working right now to see what sparked the flames at a mid-state recycling facility uh, in North Nashville just yesterday. Taking a look at the video here, uh, they got the fire quickly contained, thankfully, but the smoke did become an issue. Uh, no one got hurt, so that's the good news. But And we'll let you know just as soon as they get to the cause. Right now, extreme weather impacting parts of the country. We go to Galveston, Texas, where parts of Galveston are underwater this morning. After Alberto, the first named Atlantic storm of the season, made landfall. Now officially making landfall in Mexico, where four people died. This footage showing the coastal town of Galveston, Texas, also impacted. We've got homes that are flooded, of course, cars as well. As we take a look at what has you know become the first official storm of the hurricane season, we will have more on the way. We've got our eye on that for you. Plus, of course, your forecast here at home with our code red meteorologist Greg Bobus. That we do everything hot. I mean, even it just looks hot outside again. But if you step outside, it feels even worse. The mugginess comes back for the weekend. How hot above the 100 degree mark we're going to feel. And steer clear traffic, a bit of a backup right now. I-40 at the I-24 junction. This is just south and east of downtown Nashville as you're approaching the downtown loop. We've got a couple of cars off in the zebra stripes. We'll see what's going on and let you know if you need a detour in minutes. Plus, tracking tourists. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. There is no doubt that Nashville tourism is booming. And now Nashville leaders, they're presenting a plan and it's meant to go ahead and balance out the growth with also keeping safety and locals in mind. We have Fox 17 News Madeline Nolan joining us live. 
That's right. In the past, city leaders have focused on growing Music City, but now that we have gotten there, now they're making sure that they can sustain all of this growth while also upholding the culture of Nashville. And as we all know, Nashville tourism is a huge economic engine. According to the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, visitor growth is expected to grow to more than 21 million people in 2034. One key factor of the plan is changing the way people view Nashville, especially Broadway. Something the CVC mentions in their eight part strategic plan is how Broadway has drastically changed over the years from something that used to celebrate Nashville's culture is now being threatened by alcohol overconsumption, brawling and drug use. One of the new programs that we just introduced is called Push Pause and it's come play Music City, have a good time, have fun, don't overdo it. And, you know, the Riley Strain thing is a great example of that. It's like we want people to have a good time. We want them to enjoy the music, but we don't want them to lose their best judgment. The plan has been in the works for over two years, taking input from nearly 100 city leaders. Other focuses include drawing in international visitors and big events, while again also working with police to keep it safe and clean. Now you can read more about the strategic plan on our website at fox17.com. For now, live here on Broadway this morning, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. We want to hear from you about this topic. What do you think is the biggest challenge facing Nashville? Do you think it's growth, which is what Madeline was talking about? Perhaps crime, our homeless crisis or something else? Right now, 48% of you say you think the biggest challenge facing Nashville is crime. This is live right now on our Fox Nashville Twitter account. I'm actually uh, looking at it behind the scenes as we take a look at the results. Uh, and some of the other comments uh, left on this poll of the morning, folks have said are leadership. So leadership would you know, fall into that other category. If you have strong feelings about the direction of Nashville, would encourage you to take part. Head to Twitter.com, search Fox Nashville, and you can take part in our poll right now. Checking in with our code red meteorologist. Earlier, you were talking about the moon and telling folks to look up tonight. Yeah. I also want to mention the full moon pick and party is going to be happening tonight. A lot of folks want to get out there and enjoy the music. It'll it'll be warm, but no rain or anything. So as long as you're prepared for the heat going through sunset and then things getting a little bit cooler, uh, you know, kind of hour by hour. I'm not saying cold by any means, but it'll get better. No rain. So I mean, as long as you can have that going for you, you're in, you're in good shape. And we're also in good shape out at the airport right now. We're taking a look as we always do a couple times every morning, just around now about flights in and out of BNA. What are we seeing? Anything to be concerned about right now? I'll tell you how our weather is going to be 81 degrees at 9 o'clock, 92 at noon, and 94 at 3. On and off with some cloud cover and maybe a pop up shower, but nothing here locally that should cause any issues as far as flight uh, cancellations or delays. We always look for delays. We're up to 12 right now, which is fairly typical for this time of the, of the morning and this time of the week, especially with the amount of people coming into and out of Nashville for the upcoming weekend. 72 right now with no wind whatsoever. So we have no problems to start off the day. Maybe you have nothing to do with the airport. You want to know, well, can I mow my lawn? Yes, you can today, tomorrow, and also on Sunday. But here's the kicker. You got to know what time of the day is going to be most comfortable right after sunrise. Now, I don't literally mean get out there at 545 in the morning. Don't be that neighbor. I mean, get out there before you go to work. Maybe you're going to get out there 637, 730 when people are waking up. That's going to be the best bet for you. If not, you're waiting until close to sunset, which is not until 807 later on today. Again, temperatures are going to slowly climb, so if you have any outdoor or backyard plans and you're, there's no shady spots around you, you can get a sunburn within 15 minutes of being outside and being exposed. So sunscreen, sunglasses, all the stuff we were doing yesterday. Continue that not just today, but for the foreseeable future. 95 this afternoon, upper 90s, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. All of those days, not going to feel like what you see on your screen. They're all, including today, going to feel upwards of 100 for the heat index. Greg, thank you. At 618, do you want to check in for your steer clear traffic update and take you here approaching the downtown loop I-40, I-24 junction. Now, earlier, about 30 minutes ago or so, we saw three vehicles that were right here in the median. Now it's two vehicles in the median, so it could slightly slow down traffic a little bit, so just be mindful of this. Again, this is I-40, I-24 junction approaching the downtown loop. Other than that, we're not seeing any other issues out there that we need to bring to your attention right now.
We have a bipartisan group of lawmakers calling to designate Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism, and many lawmakers who say this should have already been done. Let's listen. Exhibit A, yeah. I rest my case. Yeah, there you go. Two of the most autocratic, atrocity-committing leaders in the world standing together. Now, that was Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal, who joined Lindsey Graham, a Republican, who are coming together. Again, this is a bipartisan effort asking colleagues to take a vote, voicing new concerns over Russia's deepening partnership with North Korea. When we first brought you the story earlier this week, we said that what you're seeing right here is something that uh, the world doesn't want to see happen. Uh, those senators say that the terror designation, if they could establish it for Russia, would boost morale for soldiers in Ukraine, struggling to beat back the Kremlin forces. If there was any doubt about who Putin is in terms of a terrorist state, he just entered into a defense agreement with North Korea, for God's sake, and pledging to help their nuclear program. If you can forgive all that, then you will shine in history all the wrong ways. All right, automatic sanctions would kick in with the terror designation if it gets approved, along with new limits on trade in and out of Russia. The decision ultimately up to the State Department, but the resolution from Congress would certainly send a strong message. And we are continuing to follow international headlines because the next leader of the NATO military alliance appears to have been chosen. Netherlands prime minister is now on track to become the next secretary general of NATO. He is the only remaining candidate in the race after Romania's president announced yesterday that he would go ahead and withdraw his bid. The current secretary general's term though does end in October and he said earlier this week that he thinks yes, Netherlands Prime Minister will be a good leader for the alliance. I think uh, uh, Mark Rutte uh, is uh, a very strong uh, candidate. He has a lot of experience as Prime Minister. He's a close friend uh, and colleague. In Netherlands, the Netherlands Prime Minister will still need to be officially confirmed, though, by all 32 member states. What's going on at Bridgestone Arena? And a prestigious award it just received as we tell you that. Plus, take a look at other events happening around Nashville. Yeah, let's talk about baseball. A historic baseball game bringing the major leagues to Alabama. How they honor the legendary Willie Mays. Thanks so much for waking up with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. I was just mentioning Bridgestone Arena. Here's a live look there right now. Not a lot of traffic downtown, so that's good news. Quick reminder for you, if you are new to Nashville or maybe just visiting, we are the only live local news source for Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky all the way through 9 a.m. Sofas and sectionals, dining rooms, bedrooms, mattresses, and more. The B.F. Myers 4th of July tent sale. Plus incredible deals showroom too. Our biggest tent ever with more furniture than ever. The B.F. Myers 4th of July tent sale. Choose from one of the largest selections in the state of Tennessee during the Nissan Thrill of the Summer sales event at Matthews Nissan. Take your pick, a new Kicks or a new Sensor for only $2.99 a month. Get 2.9% for 60 months on a new Pathfinder or up to $8,500 off the MSRP on a new Armada or Titan and get a lifetime warranty and award-winning service. Get big savings at MatthewsNissan.com. You're gonna love our prices. This is uh, much bigger than that. The San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals played at Rickwood Field in Birmingham to honor the legendary Willie Mays. Yeah, who played for the Giants and the Birmingham Black Barons. 99-year-old Negro Leagues veteran player, though, Bill Grayson threw out the first pitch. It was so cool. Some of the game high points included a two-run homer in the first for the Cards and a three-run homer later for the Giants. But the Cardinals got the 6-5 win. Fans at this stadium saying the spotlight on African-American baseball history, it truly meant so much to them. You've seen it come from nothing because the Negro Leagues are practically forgotten. And just for those guys who were in the Hall of Fame, that was the only ones they recognized. But when I walk in here and I see somebody wearing a Cool Papa Bell St. Louis Stars jersey, and, and you couldn't even buy a jersey 40 years ago. So I see that and, you know, it just really, uh, it, it inspires you. And, and let you know that there's hope. If we do the work and tell the history, people will embrace it and they'll enjoy it because it's a great history. It's not, it doesn't have anything phony. 
By the way, the Giants and the Cardinals will face off tomorrow at 115 back in St. Louis. All right, back here in Nashville, though, we're talking about the sounds. Baseball, there's going to be games there as well. We're taking a look at the forecast, kind of preparing you for what's to come. Here's a tip. Sunglasses, water, your hat, all of that. You're going to need it. 6 p.m., 93, and then by 10 o'clock for the fireworks show, the Fox 17 News Firework Night. Well, it's going to be 76 degrees out there, so it's cooling down not by much, but, hey, it's good weather to get out there and enjoy some baseball. Let's check steer clear traffic right now. Good news, just in the last couple of moments, TDOT showed up on the scene of whatever happened here at the I-40, I-24 junction. Now, we've seen a few cars stalled out in the zebra stripes here at this interchange. Uh, we weren't sure why. We're still not sure why, but TDOT just now pulled up to try to give a little bit of cover here, maybe get this cleared out. Now, this is as you approach the downtown loop coming into Nashville. So if you are coming in on I-24 this morning, say from Annie, you are going to come into a slow zone as you come around that left turn bend <laughs> into downtown. This really is the biggest concern of the morning. We have no other crashes reported currently, which is great news. So everywhere else you're waking up right now, you've got the green light to get out and go. Just ahead here on Fox 17 News, survivors of violence getting together in hopes of stopping future shootings, doing some prevention, what they're now asking from our lawmakers. After parties, concerts. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Now on Fox 17 News This Morning, gun violence survivors and advocates working together in hopes of preventing escalating violence. They have a simple question for lawmakers. Hey kids at home, if you're watching right now, let this story be a lesson to you. The woman you see here on your screen says she got bored. What did she do? Well, police say she committed a serious crime. We'll tell you about the charges she's facing. And it's Friday morning, so we're tracking your weekend forecast. It's, it's going to be hot. <laughs> we know that. But we're going to explain just how hot and get you ready for next week if you're planning your summer vacation. Glad to be here for you to kick off your weekend. I'm Jennifer Waddell. And I'm Erica Glover. We're going to get started this Friday morning talking about a story about a conversation. Yeah, folks in Brentwood, they're concerned about crime, and now they're asking lawmakers to have a conversation. Yeah, they just want to talk about their big concerns and see what can be done before crime gets out of control in their Brentwood community. We understand they had a town hall at the Brentwood Library just last night. Our Fox 17 News reporter Johnny Maffey has taken a look at what happened, and he's got the story. Well, one part of the message of last night's town hall was trying to have a conversation and really open up the talks about the concerns. Another part was trying to get victims and families calling on state leaders for them to get more resources, especially those involved and connected and affected by the Covenant shootings, as well as the Waffle House shooting back in 2018. We talked to Sharita Henderson, who has gone through a couple dozen surgeries after being shot multiple times in the Waffle House in Antioch. She says it's been a gruesome six years since then. It wasn't just me. Um, there are other victims and survivors and their families, and we've all tried to come together and find some sort of normalcy and some sort of direction. Um, for us, unfortunately, there was no direction. Um, resources were not available for us in ways that we needed them to be and we had to figure them out on our own. And Claire Jones, who hosted the event last night, is a state representative candidate. She says that Tennessee has the seventh highest rate of gun violence and wants to see a change. In Brentwood, I'm Johnny Maffey, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Excuse me, 632 and the three things to know for the forecast getting up and moving here on a Friday. As we have, we're starting off the first weekend of summer with limited rain chances. So that doesn't mean that every day is completely dry for everyone. A few of us might actually luck ourselves into a quick moving shower or weak storm, but nothing widespread or even close to it until next week. We're still aiming for 100 degrees for how it feels. We're not going to hit it on the actual thermometer, but that's because the humidity is going to be even higher. So it's still going to feel like we're above 100 degrees. We're all clear when it comes to code red. We're just in this hot period that we're in with not a lot of rainfall. So not a whole lot of cause for concern when it comes to any code red weather. What to wear or what to grab before you head out the door? Well, whatever you've been wearing out, out of the closet here just to be comfortable every day, keep going with the same routine. Nothing's changed there. You still want the shades, but I'm going to have you grab the umbrella just in case, because there is that chance for a pop-up shower out the door here on June 21st, the second day of summer and one of our longest daylight days that we have of the entire year. 74 at 7 o'clock, 77 already at 8 a.m. and 81 degrees 
by the time we hit 9 o'clock this morning. We'll hit 90 by the time we go into early afternoon, taking a look at the seven day forecast and you'll see 95 today. Upper 90s, close to 100 for Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. A lot to break down about your upcoming weekend coming up in your COVID forecast. Greg, thank you. Steer clear traffic. Uh, we've got a little bit of a problem spot here on your inbound commute to Nashville from I-24. Uh, if you look toward the top and the left side of your screen, you're going to see what appears to be now a flatbed truck that has shown up to pick up one of two cars stranded in the zebra stripes as you approach the I-40, I-24 split. This is as you're coming into the downtown loop and you can see a big brake check. Folks probably just slowing down to see what's going on. So this would be a rubberneck delay. I don't think it's worth a detour at this time. The backup's just not that big, but did want to bring it to your attention. Good news, the rest of your steer clear traffic looks really good. Uh, we have no other crashes reported right now. We'll check it again <laughs> in just a few minutes. Operation Crime and Justice Metro Police tell Fox 17 News the woman you see here on your screen confessed to trying to set a fire inside of a discount store because she was bored. Well, officers say Adriana Ellison won't be bored now. Uh, she's going to have to deal with charges that she's facing after using an electric lighter that she had just bought to try to set fire to a display inside of a five below store. So now she's charged with attempted aggravated arson. All right, some stories make you scratch your head. Yep. Well, in just a matter of hours, Live Golf is going to tee off for the first time here in the Mid-State. Now, this tournament is taking place over at the Grove. It's in Franklin in Williamson County, about a 45-minute drive with no traffic from Nashville. Those behind Live Golf say this is so different from the PGA. There are no cuts, so everyone does stay out throughout the tournament. Live, though, also features team competitions and music. And organizers say, I mean, truly, it feels like a festival kind of kind of vibe here. We actually have about 150 to 200 speakers around the entire course, plays music throughout the entire tournament. Live music, too. There are still tickets available for today, but they're going fast. If you want to get some more information about location, timing, all of that, we got you covered. Head on over to Fox17.com and search Live Golf. Well, this is an interesting development here. The judge that is handling former President Trump's classified documents case was reportedly asked to step aside from the case and refused those details in minutes. And a special weekend for the Vols as they make history by getting to the College World Series finals in Omaha and they try their best to win. And still to come on Fox 17 News this morning in our 7 o'clock hour amid recent warnings regarding 638 is the time right now national news involving politics. The judge overseeing Donald Trump's classified documents case reportedly rejected pleas from her colleagues to go ahead and step aside. All right, let's dig in here. The New York Times reporting that two federal judges reached out to Judge Aileen Cannon shortly after she got the assignment. Among those people asking her to recuse herself was the district's chief judge who reportedly urged Cannon to give the case to someone with more experience. The report comes as Cannon faces scrutiny for overseeing the case as a Trump appointed judge and refusing to set a start date for the trial. Now it's interesting because with regards to the case in New York, uh, you've got the opposite side of the political spectrum. Mr. Trump facing 42 felony counts related to his alleged mishandling of classified documents, though in this particular case, he's pleaded not guilty. Let's talk about sports though, because tomorrow, Tennessee, the Vols enter the College World Series finals for the first time in more than 50 years. The Vols taking on Texas A&M in a best of three series. All right, so it's the Aggies and the Vols. Game one, 6.30 p.m. tomorrow in Omaha. Game two will be Sunday at 1 o'clock, and if needed. It won't be. <laughs> game three <laughs> will start at 6 p.m. Monday. Erica's calling for a sweep for the Just balls. a little confidence, okay? Got to go in confident at this point, especially if you can just wrap it up. Take a look here. What we're not wrapping up is the heat. We've had nine days so far. Now that's the number uh, at 90 degrees or above so far this year. We're going to have three more in a row into and out of the weekend today, tomorrow, and Sunday, and keep it going next week as well. That number typically gets to 49 by the end of the season. So by the end of September and October, and we're already going to be at number 10 after today. The AC is still going to be cranked up the entire day and the entire weekend. Just know that it only cools your house about 20 degrees colder than what it is outside. So if it's going to be 98 tomorrow, it may struggle to get you past the mid 70s. If you're indoors, keep that in the back of your mind. My curious question this morning, 
The word mortgage comes from a term in what language? Italian, French, Latin, or Greek? I'll have the answer for you. We'll meet our dog of the day coming up in about five minutes. Hmm. All right. Hmm. We're both, well, I feel like I know the answer. I know the answer. Because you would think Latin. Yes. Because everything pretty much derives from there. But also, it sounds like it could be French. Okay, well, we'll take a look at the answer here in just a minute. Right now, let's get to steer clear traffic. Because we know you want to get out the door on time. I-65 at the I-24 junction, typical slow and go here. We've got a brake check approaching Trinity Lane. This is, as I mentioned a little while ago, this is one of our standard congested zones, but it looks like things have just been complicated just a tad. Take a look at this. TDOT giving us a live view around something happening on the left shoulder, which is why this is uh, looking to stack up maybe a little bit more than usual. All right, so here's what we're gonna advise. If you are coming into Nashville from north of town and you come in on I-65 or I-24, extra congestion now because TDOT has just arrived to a car that may just be having car trouble off on that left shoulder. Everybody merging over one lane as a result. We'll check back in here in just a couple minutes and let you know if you need a detour. After the break, though, we're talking about how Nashville leaders are now trying to tackle the growing demand by two. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Time right now, 644. And as Nashville builds and expands, more tourists are flocking to Music City than ever before. It's sparking mixed feelings from both locals and business owners, and of course, folks that are visiting. Nashville's mm -hmm. tourism hospitality industry has now created a new plan, and they say it aims to balance everyone's interests. So we're getting some more details to find out how are they making that happen. Yeah, it's a pretty tall goal there. Nashville draws visitors from around the world, of course. But over the last couple of years, post-pandemic, the city has struggled to tackle crime, drug use, excessive drinking, homelessness is a crisis in downtown. According to Deanna Ivey, the president of the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, reversing that trend is part of their goal. It's like, what can we do as a city, you know, together? We have to work with the mayor's office. We have to work with the police department. We, we're working with all the different organizations. We can't control that as the CBC, but we can help advocate for it and we can help influence it. And that's part of what this plan is. Well, she also says that their other focuses do include drawing international tourists. I don't think they have a problem with that, but making sure that folks have lots of options for hotels and restaurants while also focusing on public safety. If you would like to catch up on the entire plan, do that by heading to our website. It's fox17.com. Let's talk sports now. The Sounds will take on the Durham Bulls again tonight. Last night's game, hard fought contest, scoreless through the 10th inning. We had a 1-1 one -one wow. tie in the 11th but Durham pulls ahead of the sounds in the 12th. Um, Fox 17 fireworks Friday night happens tonight. The game starts at 635. Maybe baseball is not your jam. Let's talk about soccer news. Nashville SC playing New York City FC tomorrow and the boys in gold are going to be wearing their Juneteenth warm up shirts as a team as a belated Juneteenth celebration. This particular match does begin at 730 at Geodis Park and looking ahead to next Saturday Inter Miami is returning to Nashville. I know a lot of folks always looking forward to that. Yeah, Lionel Messi. Hmm. Coming back to Nashville. All right, let's take a look at your forecast right now. 646 is your time. Greg just posed the curious question of the day a moment ago. That we did, yes. The curious question is the word mortgage comes from a term in what language? Italian, French, Latin, or Greek? I'm going with C. I'm sticking with it. Sticking with Latin. All right, so I mentioned that it seemed like Latin would be a really good choice, but then I thought... It seems like it could have a French origin, so I'm going with B, French. Going with B. French is the correct answer. Ooh la and la. And mortgage means, mortgage means death pledge. Well, <laughs> seems about right to me. And I read that and I went, yeah. How appropriate. That's pretty spot on. That's so, hilarious. So the French helped us name the thing that we have to pay every month that feels like you're giving away a part of your soul. It's your death pledge. Take a look here. Our dog of the day, Ollie, refills your soul with so much love. Take a look at that. I love this smile. I'm betting Ollie's going to get a lot of good treats later on today. Taking a look at a good dog walking forecast. This is going to take us into the afternoon, and we're going to eventually be in the 90s again. So morning hours are going to be premier for everything to do outside every single day for the next 7 to 10 days. How do you get us your dog of the day photo? You send it on Facebook, meteorologist Greg Bobas. You find that pinned post, and I'll get your doggo shown right here on Fox 17 News this morning. Taking a look at our forecast, though, later in the day. I mentioned the 90s. If you're not having a shaded area in the backyard, if you don't have any water to cool you down, this might be an indoors kind of an afternoon. It's going to be humid, too. 92. 
at noon, 94 degrees at 3 p.m. When you factor in the humidity, it's going to feel close to 100 today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Every day, very hot. Taking a look right now, 72. We've been very warm. These are uncharacteristically warm mornings. And the afternoons don't make us feel any better. 95 today, 98 tomorrow and Sunday, 99 Monday and Tuesday. Rain chances, very few and far between. Maybe a shower between lunch and dinner time today. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. Here's a tropical shower frozen in time near Trent, Texas, west of Abilene. Former tropical storm Alberto sent these conditions into western Texas. Severe weather rolled through Maine Thursday during the tail end of a multi-day heat wave. Thunderstorms knocked down trees and electric lines, leaving thousands without power. And this shelf cloud was spotted ahead of strong storms in Ainsworth, Nebraska. For more content like this, follow the National Weather Desk on Instagram. At 648, we do want to check in now and see what your steer clear traffic is shaping up to be. Hopefully save you some time before heading out the door this Friday morning. We're checking back in on the traffic always here typically in this area north of downtown I-65, the I-24 junction. That's what we're showing you on your screen right now. There really isn't a, a detour you should take for this. You see this traffic typically every weekday morning. You can take Ellington. That's a good option. We'll continue checking in on all of your steer clear traffic updates though throughout 9 o'clock. Former Donald Trump advisor Steve Mannon is set to start his four month prison sentence next month. In fact, just yesterday, a federal appeals court rejected Bannon's bid to get that delayed. A jury found him guilty of contempt two years ago for not complying with a subpoena for an interview with the January 6th investigation. Bannon's trial judge initially paused his prison sentence for his appeal to play out, but his conviction was ultimately upheld. Then earlier this month, the Justice Department requested to lift the hold on Bannon's sentence. A federal judge ruled Bannon must turn himself in by the 1st of July. By the way, it is likely that Bannon will seek the intervention of the Supreme Court regarding his case. But for now, he is expected to report to a low security federal prison over in Connecticut. Hey, if you've ever wondered how Olympic athletes stay in such great shape, we're about to show you. We've got the countdown to the Paris Summer Olympics on. Yeah, nutrition and fitness experts are sharing how top athletes are dieting and training ahead of the global games. Maybe we can get some inspiration here. <laughs> Fox News' Chris Dimio taking a closer look. Excitement continues growing ahead of next month's Summer Olympics in Paris. But as organizers race to put the finishing touches on event facilities, top athletes from around the world are also busy preparing for the games. These are the elite of the elite athletes. Health experts say competitors at the Olympic level must eat in ways that are drastically different than the average person looking to stay in shape. They're going to need more protein. They're going to need more fluids, more sodium to replace what they're losing in sweat. Lauren Link of Purdue University says nutrition can make or break an athlete's chances of going for gold. And when it comes to how much food most Olympians eat in a day, the results could shock you six, seven, eight thousand calories and maybe even more for some of the training that these athletes are doing. But it's not just what they put into their bodies that counts. We're trying to maximize both the physiological and psychological preparation. Because Olympians are in incredible shape, fitness experts say these athletes must engage in specialized training called peaking to try and be a cut above the rest. When you're peaking, you're trying to squeeze that last little bit of juice out of the orange, so to speak, to maximize performance. The higher level of athlete, the smaller differences there is between pre-peaking and post. So it may only be a 1% or less difference in performance, but at the highest levels, that could be the difference between winning a gold medal and not even making the final heat. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. Well, I think I've already peaked. <laughs> Okay, the well, time is fast. Let's talk about this donkey <laughs> that went missing Whoa. five years ago. Okay. <laughs> Discovered living with wild animals. What the old owners had to say about this <laughs> donkey sighting. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to tell us around here. Uh, it's still to come on Fox 17 News this morning in our 7 o'clock hour. Amid recent warnings regarding fake airline tickets, we're going to issue the alert and make sure you know how to protect yourself. This 4th of July, celebrate with explosive savings at Electronic Express. Need a new laptop? Get the Asus VivoBook for just $5.99. Feel secure with a Night Owl camera system with a terabyte DVR, only $2.59. Come visit us in-store or shop online at Electronic Express.
I was in foot pain for 20 years. I bought all these products <laughs> and not a single one worked. When I drove past the Good Feet store, I thought, I'm just, I'm gonna stop in. What can it hurt? They wanted to make sure that they gave me the right arch support for my feet, for my feet, not somebody else's feet. And you just knew, like your feet just, when they got on the right ones, they were like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm Teresa, and that's my Good Feet story. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Celebrate Independence Day with Southern Boom Fireworks. America's Fireworks Authority. Shop artillery shells, 500 gram cakes, novelty sparklers, and more. 175 items priced at $9.99 or less. Southern Boom Fireworks has it all and all at a great value. Join the Southern Boom Fireworks Rewards Program and get a show starter free along with money saving coupons. Southern Boom Fireworks. Shop our fireworks store on Fort Campbell Boulevard in Clarksville and several tents near you. Southern Boom Fireworks. Rev up your savings at Ford of Columbia and score big on unbeatable deals. Like our same-day oil change with free pickup within 25 miles. Or our two-day reservation times on any major repairs. We also have buy three tires, get the fourth one free. Here at Ford of Columbia, we never charge. After dinner time, pushing towards sunset, very uncomfortable. The heat and the humidity both there together. Humidity building into the weekend, and that will also bring up the heat index to plus one hundred multiple days in a row. So I've dropped the actual air temperature because when the humidity gets stronger, which it's now going to, that makes it harder for us to get that actual air temperature to climb a lot as well. It's still going to feel just as hot though, as hot as 102, 103 on Sunday can't be ruled out. So warm around the clock too. That means even the mornings, which you can tell right now, are going to be in the 70s, meaning we get no relief overnight to cool us down much. It's just hot from start to finish in all respects. Take a look here on your screen, the Fox 17 Code Red weather app. You can scan that, or you can go to the App Store, Google Play Store. All you got to do is just type in Code Red. It's a free app. It'll give you the radar. It'll give you the hour by hour temperature. And unfortunately, a very hot seven-day forecast that I'll have updates to coming up as we go into our 7 o'clock half hour. Greg, thank you. Steer clear traffic not looking too bad here for a Friday morning, especially at 7 o'clock. I don't know if y'all have Friday off or what, but look at the traffic flow coming in from Antioch. It looks good. Maybe you guys have a work from home Friday. Uh, really no congestion at all coming in along I-24 from Antioch, Smyrna, Laverne, Murfreesboro. Y'all are in the green pretty much all the way into Nashville, which is just great news, especially for a Friday. We are seeing a little bit of a slowdown up in Jolton. So I-24 near 431, which is the exit for Jolton and Springfield. A little bit of a backup there, but we don't have a camera in that area. <laughs> I just bring that to your attention to let you know you might have to sit in a couple of extra minutes of traffic there in Jolton on I-24. Otherwise looking really good to kick off your Friday morning. Well, this morning, Greg's curious question of the day is all about mortgages. So how about some good news for home buyers right now. Mortgage rates falling for the third straight week to their lowest level in nearly three months. Now when we say dropping, we mean by just the tiniest bit. Tiny. Uh, Freddie Mac reporting yesterday that the standard 30 year fixed rate mortgage is 6.87%. That is still incredibly high, you know, based on what we have experienced over the last several decades. Uh, the 2024 peak, 7.2%. So we've gone from 7.2 to 6.8. Still, mortgage rates, as I mentioned, remain higher than anything that we saw uh, in the decade before 2022. And that's the year that the Federal Reserve started to raise interest rates to combat inflation. We'll look for any small wins, though. Yeah. Let's talk about money, though, when it comes to Olive Garden. Olive Garden's menu may be getting more expensive. The what? restaurant chain says they're going to continue to raise their prices after a drop Golly. in their sales last quarter. Mm -hmm. That soup and salad combo. The company says its usual customers are struggling to keep up with food inflation. And Olive Garden CEO says they're still not using discounts in order to attract customers despite the recent drop in profits. Well, that makes no sense for us, the consumer. OK, so you're having a drop in profits, so you're going to raise your prices when people already are struggling to go out to eat. That's certainly not going to get you any extra customers, right? No, I don't think so. That, ma that math ain't mathin, as they would say. Do they still have the never-ending pasta bowls? Well, I don't know, but it's going to cost you more <laughs> if they do. Hey, check this out. The streets of Reno, Nevada, looking more like the Wild West. Traffic coming to a standstill as nearly 300 cattle made their way 
to the 105th annual Reno Rodeo. Wow, that's really cool. The annual cattle drive takes five days and the assistance of 60 volunteers. About 140,000 people are expected to attend the 10-day event, which began yesterday. All right, keeping it old school. 7 o'clock hour starts right now. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. This morning on Fox 17 News, we're live on the links. Live Nashville is set to tee off today. Some of the best golfers in the world are in town. We're talking to the people who put it all together. And they're all going to be sweating while they're at the golf course <laughs> the next three days. There's no way around it. Heat and humidity, some of the hottest feels like temperatures this year so far. We'll work you through them. And steer clear traffic mentioned it just a moment ago, but things are looking unusually nice here to kick off a Friday morning out on the interstates. We'll keep an eye on it for you and check back in on steer clear traffic in just a couple minutes. Like you said, Jen, maybe a lot of folks working from home. We're jealous. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us here on Fox 17 News this Friday morning. I'm Erica Glover. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. We're glad to be your live local news source. Always here for you through 9 a.m. So let's get right to our top local headlines here on your Friday morning. We do want to get started right now with an amber or a silver alert rather that has been issued for a missing man out of Cumberland County. This is east of Nashville on the plateau. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation TBI is searching for 80 year old Roger Phillips. He was last seen Wednesday. I'm just checking uh, the TBI Twitter account because they do put out these silver alerts through social media and confirming that he is still considered missing. Uh, he's 5'11", gray hair, blue eyes. You can see pictures here of Mr. Phillips plus the truck he may be in. Last time anybody saw him, he was wearing black joggers with a white stripe down the side and black shoes. He might be traveling in that maroon Ford F-150 extended cab, a little bit older model. It's a 2010 uh, and he does have Tennessee tags. So any information at all about Mr. Phillips, please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Again, I just double checked uh, the TBI still does have him listed as missing as part of the silver alert. Now to Operation Crime and Justice, giving some updates out of Clarksville. One person is dead and another is in a Nashville hospital after a shooting. Again, this happened in Clarksville. Police say they discover two gunshot victims inside a home over on Timberline Drive yesterday afternoon. One person died and the other victim was life flighted to Nashville. They are in critical condition. This investigation this Friday morning is ongoing and we'll continue updating you as soon as we get some more details. Happening today, the hype has been building all week and Live Golf will tee off for round one at the Grove in Williamson County. It's a big party, really. Fox 17 News' Johnny Maffey is live on the course for us this morning. You keep getting the great stories. <laughs> what, what's up with that? Good morning. Not a bad assignment. Yeah, well, happy Friday to everyone out there. We've been having a lot of fun this week for the first week here on Fox 17. And, well, what better way to cap it off than Live Nashville. They're teeing off at 1215 today. Some of the best golfers in the world are in town, and Sean Riley's been one of the ones putting this all together. He's the tournament director here for the weekend. Sean, it's all here. You're putting the finishing touches on now. What's going through your head? Oh, I mean, it just looks gorgeous out here. We've got so many great fan activations on site. You get a chance to come out today, tomorrow, or Sunday. We've got some really fun things in store. Definitely. So they're teeing off at 1215, and it's three days versus the PGA doing a four-day tournament. Um, what are some of those fan things, and what are some of the differences? Yeah, with the shotgun start, we're able to put a full production together for the experience. We've got uh, a party hall at number 15. It's going to be a lot of fun, Four to 6,000 people around. Um, if we get a hole in one, we have an opportunity for a fan to win $100,000. It's part of our Live X membership. Anyone's eligible to sign up for it. It's absolutely free and you don't need to be present. So if there's a hole in one on 15 today and you go to Live Golf and sign up for Live X, you have an opportunity to win $100,000. That's pretty sweet. You can cash in on someone else cashing in too. Now, uh, another thing you were telling me, you know, the way the Grove is set up for the fans, the access, right? I mean, hole one's over here. We're looking over the, overlooking the 18th green as well. Um, if people want to come, how do they do that? Uh, absolutely. If, if you want to come, please do buy tickets quickly. We are nearly sold out for all three days. Limited, limited tickets still available. But if you do, absolutely take a little extra time. We're going to have a lot of folks on site. Definitely come hydrated. Come to have a lot of fun. But the way the golf course sets up, you know, you've got access to the best players in the world, the reigning U.S. Open champion in Bryson DeChambeau. Um, and then there's a whole lot of activities on site that are fun. Number 14, we've got a real taste of Nashville in the Groove Zone with local musicians and 
and uh, just lots of fun stuff on site. You won't uh, you won't be uh, disappointed. Absolutely, Sean. Thanks so much for coming on Fox 17 News this morning. So, guys, again, 12:15 is when everybody tees off today, and we talking about everything uh, all morning when we check back in in a half hour right here from the Grove live on the links I'm Johnny Matthew guys back over to you what fun and now the downer has to be on TV and talk about how it's going to be for the whole thing so here's your live tournament and maybe you are going out there there are a few of those tickets left like they just said and you want to get out you're not gonna be able to beat the heat you have to contend with it the best you can though it's a nice shot. 95 degrees will be the high temperature today. 98 degrees tomorrow, 98 degrees on Sunday. And since that tournament takes place daily from noon to six, basically, you're going to be there during the peak heating like today. For instance, 92 degrees at noon, 95 at three and 93 degrees at six o'clock. A feels like temperature of 101 degrees with no wind. That's how we're going to be. The heat index will make us feel as hot as 100 degrees all three of these days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Actual air temperatures for Saturday and Sunday will be in the upper 90s. There's a chance that's small. You see just a 20% that we could see an isolated shower or weak storm later today. We'll look at that possibility and the timeline coming up in the next check of your COVID forecast. Greg, thank you so much. At 706, let's also do a quick check of your steer clear traffic updates. Maybe you're heading out to this area, Broadway, I-40 Broadway, downtown. Man, it really looks like folks are just not out there. Maybe you're working from home, as Jim was mentioning earlier before the break, or maybe you're just uh, relaxing inside in the air conditioning, <laughs> not getting outside in that heat. This area looking very good. We are giving you the green light, I-40 Broadway, heading downtown. A Tennessee mother facing new charges in the disappearance, but the death as well of her daughter. Why attorneys are trying to get this case moved to Nashville or Memphis. And right now we're taking a live look over in Philadelphia. This is where former President Donald Trump is going to be hosting his first Philadelphia. Right now, Fox 17 News, we are sharing an update as a man who was shot in the head over the weekend has now died. 19 year old Darwin Henriquez Perdomo was injured in a Nolansville Pike parking lot. It happened early on Sunday and then dropped off over at Southern Hills Medical Center by an unknown person. While police say witnesses at this scene saw a large group of cars in the parking lot and they were doing donuts and also driving erratically. This is all according to police. And that is when police say multiple shots were fired and that's when the victim was struck. If you know anything about what may have happened in that parking lot leading up to this death, you were asked to go ahead and call Crime Stoppers. And in Operation Crime and Justice, an update on a story that we've been following for years. The story of an East Tennessee mother who's been behind bars for four years now, awaiting trial in the disappearance and ultimately the death of her 15-month-old daughter. Well, Megan Boswell, the mom, is facing new charges. She is facing an additional first-degree murder count on top of 19 other charges related to the disappearance and the death of her daughter, Evelyn. And because of all the attention that the case is getting, Megan Boswell's attorney is asking the courts to relocate her trial to another city. He mentioned Nashville or Memphis, saying that in East Tennessee, they're not going to get a fair trial because of all the attention the case has received. They're going to hear arguments on whether to relocate that trial coming up August 15th. What we've asked is to move it out of Sullivan County. Obviously, I think this case has been picked up in most of the major news markets in Tennessee, but it probably has not been examined as heavily, say, in the Nashville market or the Memphis market as it would be here because it's not local to them. I've always maintained that we believe that we can pick a jury that can fairly hear the facts of this case and render a decision based on the facts and the law. Well, Governor Bill Lee signed Evelyn's law three years ago in honor of Boswell's daughter. It increased the penalties for parents who do not report their children within 48 hours. If you want to catch up on our previous coverage about this case, you can do that. Go to Fox17.com. Coming up in your forecast, here you can see the sun is up, the heat is cranking up as well. We're trying to find a little bit of rain if we can between now and the end of the weekend. And steer clear traffic looking good in Brentwood this morning. This is a live look from I-65 at Old Hickory Boulevard there in Brentwood. Good morning to you. We have more steer clear traffic updates in minutes. And Fox, Fox 7. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. 714 right now. We have some folks in Wilson County who will be protesting today. Not a typical protest, though. We're talking about a truck and tractor protest, 
against a possible industrial development. Our Fox 17 News reporter Madeline Nolan, Madeline Nolan rather, is joining us live from the Wilson County State Fairgrounds where a bunch of these farmers, Madeline, they have set up a protest. A lot going on right behind you there. A lot going on. We're actually again, like you said, here at the Wilson County Fairgrounds and just take a look at all of these tractors kind of setting up here. Um, and I'm actually going to bring it over here because we're going to talk a little bit about why they're doing this protest. Um, I'm actually joined with one of the organizers and I'm going to have him explain a little bit about the protest. Well, uh, none of us are professional protesters. We're farmers in the Tucker's Crossroads community. There's a development that's proposed on over 1,400 acres of farmland in our community, and we're against that. And we're wanting to protect our community, and we're wanting to keep agriculture in Tucker's Crossroads. Okay, and um, why do you guys want to keep agriculture? Well, you see some signs out here. Kind of One thing is no farms, no food. Uh, we are awfully proud of our community. We want it to stay the way it is. And we actually feel that there's enough industry in Tucker's Crossroads, and that's the agriculture industry. And we care about our way of life out there. Okay, so this all starts at 8.30 today. Y'all will be uh, driving all the trucks and tractors to the courthouse. Tell me a little bit about what you guys will be doing there. Well, we are. We're going to take the tractors and the trucks. It's going to be about a two-mile little protest or parade that you would have it, and we'll be down at the Wilson County Courthouse by about 9.00. We'll leave here at 8.30, be at the courthouse by 9, and we will be speaking and uh, having our voices heard at the Planning Commission meeting that starts there at 10. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jack. Um, we'll you. talk a little bit more in the next half hour. Yes, um, a little bit about this. A lot more people are supposed to come. I didn't ask, but we're going to save that for a little bit later. But for now, live here in Wilson County, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. You know, the story that's developing there this morning in Wilson County is one that is familiar to pretty much every county across the mid-state. If you don't live in Davidson County proper, chances are you live near a farm mm -hmm. somewhere, whether you're Sumner, Rutherford, Robertson, Cheatham. I mean, I'm thinking about all of our rural counties where, you know, we're hearing this argument on the regular, this, you know, divide between yeah. development and preserving what we have. So right. uh, we'll continue to follow that story live with you through nine. And Jen, you posed a question a little while ago. It just took a little while to get everything put together. Ah, okay. We're talking about, you know, outdoor activity. Yes. And not just using water, but also electrolytes. Aha. Uh -huh. Which people hear the word and they go, well, what, what do you mean electrolytes? First of all, what do they do? Well, they help to regulate nerve and muscle function. They keep your body hydrated. They balance your blood um, acidity, which I'm going to tell you what all this means momentarily, and your blood pressure, and they help you rebuild damaged tissue. That's a big one for athletes when they're working out and when they're having all this stress to their body. Here's a few of them. They're all things you hear about. They're in your food. They're not in your water. There's not a single electrolyte you can get from just a regular glass of water. What do they affect? Well, the amount of water in your blood is actually regulated by that as well. The acidity as well as I mentioned there and nerve and muscle function. What happens when you don't have enough? You can get a regular heartbeat. Fatigue, confusion, cramps, muscle weakness, hypertension, nausea, and vomiting are all effects. So if you are stressed, um, strenuously working outside, if you're an athlete who has to be outside, not necessarily just water is going to be the way you want to go. Something with electrolytes is going to help you out, give you all those nutrients back that you cannot get from just a regular glass of water. So after you're done mowing the lawn later today, maybe a bottle of Gatorade instead of a regular glass of water might help you out a little bit here. Yes, yes, and yes. For three days in a row, you can. Definitely go out there and mow. Just know that when you do, try to find the hours that aren't quite as hot. Early morning hours and hours right near the sunset will be your best bet. We're going to be humid on top of it. 95 degrees. That's the afternoon high right now, right side of your screen. Your current temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. We're going to feel close to 100 today and also on Saturday and Sunday. All right, right now we're talking about consumer news. McDonald's is starting the summer with a new value menu. We just talked about Olive Garden, now McDonald's. The fast food chain says that the new $5 value meal is going to be available across the country beginning on June 25th. It means that customers can get a McDouble cheeseburger or a McChicken sandwich with a small fry, four piece nuggets and a small drink for a limited time for cheaper prices. That's what the company says. They're also announcing that free fry Fridays are happening with the purchase of at least a dollar on their app. It's going to be happening for the rest of the year, they said, not just throughout the summer. So to come on Fox 17 News this morning, a woman facing charges 
accused of setting a fire in a five below store. Why police say that she claims she did it and it may surprise. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. We have breaking news and steer clear traffic. We've got a crash on I-65 uh, near Dickerson Pike. This is north of Nashville. TDOT on the scene. I can see an ambulance approaching right now. We have a near standstill on I-65. This is a heads up warning for everybody listening and watching north of downtown Nashville. If you commute into town from, say, Hendersonville, Gallatin, Millersville, White House, look at this. Every single lane of traffic stacked up as TDOT and first responders are on the scene. People are kind of barely shifting over to the far right to try to get off at Ellington and Briley, which is this interchange. Thanks for removing the banner there. We can see a little bit better now. Looks like this crash is kind of in the zebra stripes where you would get off to Ellington uh, or Briley, but you can see first responders also taking up the two to three right lanes of I-65 coming in. This is part of that congested zone that we already have every morning. This is going to cause a major stack up and quickly. So if you've got to get into Nashville from north of town, I would suggest Dickerson Pike or Gallatin Pike would be your best bet. We'll follow this. Plus, we just learned moments ago about another crash, a new one that has happened in Antioch. We'll take you there live in minutes. And take it down outside here this afternoon, which you can do to beat the heat. Of course, we know any water source is a good one, as long as you're taking the precautions that you need to be out there. The pool is another good choice once again today. 87 degrees at 10, middle 90s throughout the afternoon, high temperature of 95, humidity much higher than yesterday. We're going to feel close to 100 degrees later on today. So let's put on a few other things together for us here. UV index, 15 minutes, you're getting a sunburn if you're not covered up with some sunscreen. That is how intense the sun's rays are going to be for us this afternoon. Muggy meter is going up and up and will continue to go up into the weekend. The weekend is not going to be comfortable. There's no way around it. It's going to feel like it's close to 100 degrees Saturday and Sunday and even into Monday as well. So four days in a row could feel above 100. It's not a good place to start, not a good place to end when it comes to overnight temps that will still be muggy in the 70s. We've got this going for us though. Pollen counts still aren't much of an issue. The next five days, they'll stay in the low to medium category. Most of our allergens are dormant right now, and then we get a secondary push late summer into the early fall months. Taking a look, can we find a shower? That's your best chance. 11 o'clock through around 4 p.m., one or two. Little pop-up green spots, that's it. Everyone else and everything else is going to be dry. Most of us don't see any rain until we get toward the end of the weekend into Monday. One or two more pop-ups for Saturday and Sunday, and that's it. Greg, thank you. In Operation Crime and Justice, there is a woman who is now facing arson charges. She says she was bored, but listen to this story. Police say she set a fire at a five below store. Take a look at your screen because this is Adriana Ellison, who police say confessed to setting fire to a balloon cardboard display while the business was open and occupied. She told investigators that she had recently purchased an electric lighter and while she wanted to see how the electric lighter worked. She stated that she was bored and wanted to see what the lighter would do to paper or cardboard. She is now facing charges of attempted aggravated arson. And this morning, a Jackson County woman is facing animal cruelty charges after police say she purposely left her boyfriend's dog trapped in a car during extreme heat. Police say Marissa Wheeler, who you see on your screen, got into an argument with her boyfriend, then put his dog in a car with the windows up and the car turned off. Police say that dog had been in the car for about seven hours before it eventually died. Deputies say Wheeler then put the animal in water to try to revive it. Wheeler arrested and charged accordingly for intentionally and knowingly causing the dog's death. <laughs> At 726, we're taking a live look, giving you another Steer Clear Traffic update. This is an Antioch I-24 Bell Road, a, a crash over there on the left shoulder. We'll continue monitoring this update and give you some more Steer Clear Traffic options. And hey, speaking of the roads, we're talking potholes this morning. How much is TDOT investing in fixing them? We'll take a closer look in moments. And we're live. Fox 17 News this morning, your code red station. The breaking news and steer clear traffic right now, a crash snarling traffic north of downtown Nashville on I-65. We'll get you new details and detours 
in minutes. And the forecast ramping up the humidity. You can already tell it just looks a little hazy outside. How that's going to impact how we feel the entire weekend coming up in your forecast. Ooh, the entire weekend. But hey, it's Friday. Thanks so much for waking up with us here on Fox 17 News. I'm Erica Glover. I'm Jennifer Waddell. We always have you covered with live local news through 9 a.m. And right now we start with a big story impacting the mid-state. We have golfers and golf fans from around the world coming to the mid-state for Live Golf. They are teeing off for round one today at the Grove in Williamson County. Well, Fox 17 News' Johnny Maffey is joining us out there live. Now, Johnny, could you do us an exclusive interview with Bryson DeChambeau? Can you make that happen, <laughs> please? <laughs> You know, guys, I'm working my sources to try to get that done. But for now, though, we're live here inside of the merch shop, which they set up at all of these uh, places along the tour. And let's show you the special Nashville shirt they got going for the weekend. We have Louis Ustazen and uh, Brooks Kepka right here on the back. It says Live Golf Nashville. I could see some of these, uh, you know, on Broadway this summer because it's a pretty cool shirt. And Andre is joining us now. He's one of the heads of merch for Live Golf, Andre, you know, we have the Nashville specific stuff. You could really get decked out in here. What else is going on that's special for this weekend? Oh, it's absolutely, it's amazing. So as you've just seen already, we've got the uh, limited edition Nashville t-shirt. We've actually commissioned an artist to do this for every single event for us. Wow. So they are, as I said, limited. Um, we get a huge fan base following and these are a collector's items. So when you come in, they go really quick. Um, obviously with Bryson, we've gone full out with the Crushers merchandise here. We are literally packed with merchandise for that range. Mm -hmm. It will still sell out though. So if you got to get your quick to get it. Definitely. And so that's the Bryce merch right over there. Again, Live Golf, a little bit different, guys, than the PGA because, well, it's three days of golf versus four rounds. And they also do the team atmosphere as well. So, what do you got with the team atmosphere right here? So we got a really cool thing going with the teams and the teams have really helped us this event. So to push our headwear and obviously get a lot of team exposure, we have 10 limited edition signed hats per team available for this weekend for you to purchase. These are coming out sneakily hidden around the store. So those people who are lucky enough to find them, you've got a great little offer coming up. So they got to keep their eye out for those. You got to keep your eye out, but yeah. All right, Andre, thanks so much. And we are right by the 18th hole, guys, and right near uh, uh, the fan zone as well. We're going to be talking about the party hole coming up a little bit later on in our 8 o'clock hour right here on Fox 17. There's air conditioning in here, but if you come out here, hydrate, maybe a bucket hat I would recommend, and uh, definitely prepare and give yourself some extra time because it's going to be busy. And we'll talk about also uh, how you can get over here if you don't have tickets yet coming up in our 8 o'clock hour. For now, though, live at the Grove, I'm Johnny Maffey, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Yeah, Johnny, bucket hat, bucket of water. <laughs> we're going to something to help you out. It's going to be tough for the next couple of days. And he nailed it, too. The humidity is not going to be helpful. It's just going to feel uncomfortable even before it gets to the peak heating in the middle of the day. First weekend of summer, and, well, if you were the person back in February saying, why is it still so, why is it still so cold? Why are we getting snowflakes? I want summer. You can't be the person who was the same person that emails me and says, why is it so hot outside? We can't, we, we can't get everything. We, we can manage it, though. So how, how do we manage it? Light clothing. Again, find some shade, take some breaks, and maybe you get lucky and you get a pop-up shower or weak storm that moves in throughout the afternoon. 95% of us are going to see nothing here the next three days. A few of us could have a weak shower. No code red weather, not even dangerously hot, just exceptionally uncomfortable. That's what we'll call it here. You're not going to be comfortable outside even in the shade the next few days. 76 degrees right now. We're already warming up. A couple of clouds. They'll be on and off throughout the day. But other than that, really nothing else in the forecast other than the heat to talk about. We're going to be in the upper 90s and we're going to feel close to 100. So even though we've dialed it back and not put the 100 on the actual weekend again, we do have feels like temperatures that can be between 100 and 103 the next four afternoons. Greg, thank you. 7.33 is the time. Do want to bring your attention to this steer clear traffic update. Okay, we've been following this. North of Nashville, a snarl incident right here. I-65 Riley Parkway. You can see it's backing up at least four lanes of traffic. If you want to go ahead and just avoid this, plan ahead. I see folks who are trying to swerve out and that could cause another issue at hand. Gallatin or Dickerson is going to be the best option here. We're trying to figure out how many vehicles are involved in this? Mm -hmm. uh, but again, north of Nashville, I-65 Barley Parkway, just a big slowdown, and we'll continue sharing more updates as they come in. A nonprofit government watchdog group called OpenTheBooks.com is investigating potholes. Now, this is something that we do regularly here on our morning show, but specifically, they're looking at how much Tennessee is spending 
to fix the potholes on our interstates. We are joined right now live this morning with Rachel O'Brien breaking down the findings. So Rachel, can you explain just how much the state is spending on road repairs and how much for the Nashville area? We are curious too. Sure. So there are about 14,000 miles of highways uh, and roadways in Tennessee that is maintained by the state. Um, and you see road work every day. So just this week, DOT is working on at least 10 road projects in Davidson County. I-24, I-65, I-40, they're doing potholes, milling and paving, uh, a big project in I-40, retaining walls, drainage. Um, so what does all this cost? So, so far this year, the state DOT is spending almost $150 million on road resurfacing. Uh, that's potholes, but that's these larger road repairs also. So DOT, and that's just so far for this year. So DOT last year, the last two years, spent $1 billion, billion each. Um, and this year, Davidson County is getting the largest share, about $23 million so far in Davidson this year. And how does the money spent in Davidson County, Rachel, compare to the rest of the state? Yeah, so the last two years for road repairs, Davidson County got $19 million each. Um, Shelby County, you know, home to Memphis, they usually get more funding than Davidson. Uh, but so far this year, it's actually a lot less. Davidson, again, $23 million. Shelby County is only getting $10 million. So if you add it up over the last several years, they're, they're actually about equal, about $75, $76 million each for each county over the last four years. So smaller rural counties, they get a million or a few million a year. Mm -hmm. um, um, there are about a 20, 20 counties that get between 5 and $10 million every year. So it's always a project that constantly needs repair, and yeah. it's a lot of money being spent every year. Well, it is. In fact, this morning uh, we were reporting live in our earlier hours about the work on I-24 in Murfreesboro, where they are milling and repaving. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to happen at night through next week down there in Murfreesboro. And I'm just hoping, Rachel, as we uh, as we thank you and, and let you go, I'm hoping they get to I-65 at Trinity Lane real mm -hmm. soon because that entire section of road by Trinity coming into Nashville needs to be repaid. I think you're not the only driver who oh, is yeah. hoping that happens too. Oh, yeah. Well, coming up, a man free on bond in Nashville arrested again after a multi-county chase in a stolen car. Well, he's in the hospital and we're sharing another update about a repeat offender. And Fox 17 News, always your live local news source through 9 a.m. We have another. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Time right now is 739. In Operation Crime and Justice, uh, we have a man who was free on bond and wanted for robbery just arrested again after police say he led them on a chase in a stolen SUV and then got hit in traffic on I-65. What a bizarre story, but yet another case of someone being out on bond and then connected to another crime. According to Metro Police, detectives spotted a black Nissan Rogue that got stolen during a Mapco robbery back on June 10th. Cornelius Pierce reportedly took off in that SUV, and as he was driving out of Davidson County, a Metro Police officer tracked him in a chopper. Franklin and Brentwood police ended up getting in on this. They stopped that car on I-65 by using spike strips. That's when police say Pierce got out, jumped over the divider wall onto I-65 in the opposite lanes, may have tried to carjack somebody else, but that car hit him. Pierce ended up in the hospital with serious injuries and will now be facing more charges connected to all of this. We will work to find out, too, whether he gets bond. Will they give him bond again? Will he be able to get out again? That's the bigger piece of the story we'll continue to follow. And we want to hear from you right now. When it comes to Nashville and, and all the growth that we've seen over the last several years, what do you think is the big, biggest challenge facing our city? Is it growth? Is it crime? The homeless crisis or something else right now, 47% of you say it's crime like the story we just told you about. This poll is open. It's active right now on our Twitter account. You can head to Twitter.com, search Fox Nashville. Let us know what you think. 741, quick look at your forecast. The morning temperatures are on the right side of your screen. We're in the 70s right now. and We're going to push our way to the 90 degree mark here by the time we get to lunch. 89 degrees at 11, 92 at noon, 94 at 1 p.m. This is not going to be a comfortable one because on top of that, I keep saying every time you see me here, the humidity, the humidity, 
the humidity is going to be very high. We're going to have a feels like temperature of about 100 degrees right in the middle of the afternoon. Wash or wait, go for it. You can get a good car wash in. There will be a few very light stray showers today and tomorrow, but most of us are not going to see a drop of rain until next week in the forecast. And we also have the Western Kentucky State Fair, Hopkinsville. Yeah, today, tomorrow, and also on Sunday. So what does this mean? Your temperatures won't be quite as warm as they are a little more toward the south, but you're still easily making our way into the low 90s today and middle 90s Saturday and Sunday. No rain today, but just make sure that we're, again, not going to see a ton of shade in the fairgrounds. So make sure that we're definitely finding a hydration. Not only fried food, it's really hard not to, but just do things you can to keep the body going if you're going to be out in the heat. Great advice, Greg. Thanks so much. Steer clear traffic. Best advice we can give you in the traffic department right now is if you are north of Nashville, avoid I-65 near Briley Parkway. We still have two lanes of traffic that are just barely getting by here because of a crash. This is in the southbound lanes of I-65 coming in to downtown Nashville. Uh, and you can see folks are just kind of having a hard time navigating here. There are several exits both for um, Ellington Parkway uh, and the airport. So good alternates here would be either Dickerson Pike or Ellington Parkway, and we still have what's left of this crash. I-24 at Bell Road and Antioch. Police are on the scene. They've got it to the right shoulder, but causing a little bit of a backup coming in from southeast of town. 743 travel schemes impacting Nashville travelers, breaking down what you need to know if you're traveling this summer. 7.45 is the time and happening right now. Farmers in Wilson County are protesting, but it's not just like any typical protest because it's trucks and tractors. They're protesting possible industrial development. Fox 17 News reporter panel and Nolan joining us live this morning from the Wilson County State Fairgrounds where a bunch of these farmers have gathered already this morning. That's right. This is where they are staging this protest. They have begun to line up all of these tractors. You can see that they have some signs over here. No farms, no food, save our farmlands. And I'm actually going to come over here to one of these tractors to talk a little bit about um, the actual protest itself. They're going to be driving all of these tractors about two miles away to the courthouse. Um, I'm here joined with one of the organizers, um, Perry Neal. Perry, tell me a little bit about what you guys are planning to do at the courthouse. Yes, absolutely. Well, they're having the uh, Wilson County Planning Commission at the courthouse at 10 o'clock. Uh, and on the agenda is the uh, rezoning of approximately 1,400 acres of farmland uh, in our community. And it will be the first rezoning from A1 to commercial property in that area of the county. And, and that's basically what we're opposed to, is the rezoning of the land uh, from A1, which is agricultural, to commercial, which will allow uh, warehouses and uh, on a very large scale. So, okay. Um, and why um, are you guys, I guess, opposed to this? Uh, se several things, I guess. First and foremost, for for me, and I think most of us, is a uh, you know it's a quality of life issue. We we've lived in that community, and and we do farm in that community. And, and we feel like once you open the door and start rezoning this, this end of the county, we're on the east end of Wilson County. The west end of Wilson County already has a lot of commercially zoned property, a lot of warehouses, a lot of tractor trailer trucks. And we had just rather not get started on our end of the county and, and feel like that once it does get started, it will spread. This, this won't be the, you know, there'll be a few hundred acres next door every year or two. There'll be more and more of this. And like I said, I want to, I want to get back and emphasize for, for me and our community, it, it's a quality of life issue. You know, we, we, we enjoy the lifestyle we have right now, and we just don't want all the big development coming in. Yeah, and I see you guys have, like, save our farmland, um, no farms, no food. Right. Um, so it's pretty uh, important, pretty, definitely. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And like I said, uh, Wilson County and the state of Tennessee are, you know, we're, we're big ag producers, you know, and, and this county is a big ag, ag county, even though there is a lot of growth and a lot of development, yeah. still a lot of farmland out in this county, you know. I, Absolutely. And I'm going to stop you right there okay. because we're running out of time. But thank you, very thank much. you so much for talking to thank us. Um, and we're going to have more coming up. They're about to head out here around 830. But for now, live here in Wilson County, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. And at no fault of the airlines, you know, you're going to show up at the airport and, and try to get on a plane and they're going to tell you you don't have a ticket. Well, new this morning, the Better Business Bureau is warning about fake airline tickets that are circulating. Yeah, so they said this started happening back in April. Right now, Fox 17 News' Peyton Muse joining us in the studio to hopefully prevent this from happening to any of us. 
While the Better Business Bureau says it saw dozens of people reach out within the past couple of days alone, and that means dozen, dozens more could walk through the airport only to find out that their flight doesn't exist. Here's how it works. So you go online, you find a great deal for airfare travel you, to your destination. And once you book, you get a call from the company you booked with saying there are additional charges or the company will tell you that your flight is canceled and want you to move to another airline, which results in another upcharge. Now, these crooks are turning what is supposed to be a relaxing time for travelers into a nightmare. And sadly, the end result is a consumer gives these scammers quite a bit of money only to find out that they don't have a flight. They don't have a ticket. The airline doesn't know anything about their reservation. And so they're not just left with the loss of that financial impact. The Better Business Bureau says to do your research because these fake websites and those behind them are exceptionally good at making you believe that they're legitimate. Double check the flight information like your reservation numbers and the flight numbers before you agree to anything. And always use a credit card for online purchases because it's easier to get your money back if you've fallen victim. Live in studio, Peyton News, Fox 17 News, your card station. Hey, thank you so much. Some good advice there. We're going to check it now for your weekend forecast. I love saying that. It's the weekend. And no matter what the weather is, it's still the weekend. So yes. it just find something to do, whether you're just staying because it's too hot or you're going to beat the heat, whatever it is, it's still the weekend. So that's all positivity here on a Friday. I'll tell you this much, we're going to work through what is going to be, you know, the slowdowns to it, but also those little opportune win windows of time you can get out. So here we go. First of all, maybe it's the dog walk this morning. We have our dog of the day, our dog of the day, Ali. And I'm telling you what right now, <laughs> look like that. Ollie's going to get a walk later. I have a good feeling. Take a look here. Sent in by Melanie. And the forecast is getting hotter hour by hour, though. I would say by about 11 o'clock. We're pushing it here for a really comfortable and really good dog walk because we're already going to be up to near 89 degrees. 77 at 8 o'clock, 81 degrees at 9. We climb through the 80s throughout the morning into early afternoon, and then we're going to tap the brakes at 95 degrees. What does that mean for your sidewalk? It's going to feel like 125. Blacktop feels like 140. That means that just one minute of consistent contact with the sidewalk or the blacktop can start giving us some paw burns. So keep them in the grass if you can. Really want to stress that we're going to be hot the entire weekend. This is a process we have to work through today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. All five of those days, the heat index value will be above the 100 degree mark. And look at the nighttime temperatures. We really do not get much relief when it gets to overnight. Nothing really cools down. We're going to stay in the 70s. The next four nights, your current temps are on the right side of your screen all the way through 9 a.m. We do want to check in for your steer clear traffic update. We are updating you on the situation over in Antioch. There was a crash situation on the left shoulder there, I-24 Bell Road. Now you see the flashing lights. They have moved over to the right shoulder, so just be mindful of that. Uh, so crews are out there trying to figure out what's going on, resolve the situation. It's causing a little bit of a backup right here in this immediate spot, so do be mindful of this. Again, this is over in Antioch. We'll continue updating, though, your steer clear traffic updates and check back in on this situation as we continue on the rest of the morning. Post Malone making his country debut in Nashville. We'll tell you how you could see him live in moments. And Fox 17 News saying thank you by showing you that Friday. Hey, get this. Post Malone is going country and fans now have the chance to listen to him live in Nashville. The star is going to debut songs from his new country album. The Grammy nominated artist is teaming up with Bud Light for a night in Nashville. That's what they're calling it on June 6, oh, July 16th. Rather, it's going to be an exclusive one night only event. Post Malone will debut songs from his country album, some other classics. A lot of folks are excited about this. Are, do you like country music with Post Malone? Well, I mean, I like country music. The only thing I've really heard him do that's country is that deal with Morgan Wallen. I had some help. Right. Well, I guess I, I like that song. More is on the way. Okay. He just needs some help. All right. Well, yeah, he does need some help. <laughs> okay. Uh, 756, continuing the, uh, the music vibes here, you can say, this morning. Singer Sabrina Carpenter announced her short and sweet tour is coming to Nashville. She's known for hit songs like Feather and Espresso. Have to admit, neither of which I know. Uh, <laughs> she's coming to Bridgestone Arena, October 16th. Presale starts Tuesday. Okay, espresso and feather. All right, the strawberry moon continuing tonight. Greg was talking about this earlier. It's going to appear low in the sky and then stay close to the horizon. And despite the name, the strawberry moon looks like a pretty shade of gold. It's not really red, kind no. of. But it will be at its fullest tonight. 
The best time to see it just before dusk. Great night for that full moon picking party. Uh, that's at Percy Warner Park tonight. So uh, you'll be able to hear some music and see the strawberry. And it moon. might be music that you recognize. Perhaps. <laughs> One, one oh, take, a, take a look here. Let's just stick with the moon here because it's going to be at its peak tonight at 8.08. That will be when the strawberry moon is full. And as they just mentioned, yeah, this is going to be a cool one. I even saw it driving in uh, early this morning. Well, late last night, early this morning. I don't know. But, well, when it's that time of the day, everything's kind of blurred. Taking a look, it's going to be really close to the horizon. And this is what's called a moon illusion. The closer that the moon or the sun are to the horizon, think when the sun's just picking up or when it's just setting, it looks a little bit bigger. And then when you look up and it's higher up, it just kind of throws you off. It's the same distance away. It's just an illusion with how light works. Taking a look here, 95 this afternoon, muggy. And then, yeah, pop-up shower possible during the afternoon, but we're really not going to have a you know real good chance for rain until next week. That means if you're going to the Nashville Sounds game tonight, first pitch, 635, and it is a Fox 17 fireworks night. 93 degrees at 6 o'clock, 87 degrees at 8, and 76 at 10. As long as you're staying hydrated the proper way, and beating the heat. It should be a pretty nice night out at the ballpark and the weekend as a whole. We're going to keep it hot. Upper 90s both days. Humidity continues to build. That is going to put the heat index above 100 for Saturday and Sunday. Dear clear traffic right now. Things are starting to clear up a little bit, but still some congestion on I-24 at Bell Road in Antioch. We had an earlier crash in the left lanes got moved to the right shoulder. Uh, we did have an extra police officer showed up. It's interesting. So we have one officer facing the wrong direction, like facing oncoming traffic. Kind of can't help but wonder if they're you know, trying to help somebody who's got car trouble. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this for you. This crash and the crash on I-65 north of town up near Briley Parkway, the only two things we're tracking right now, and they're both in the clearing stages. Promotional consideration for this program provided by Ponzi Law. Do you know someone who is a hometown hero in our community doing amazing things? If you do, all of us here at Fox 17 News, we would love to share their story. Ponzi Law on Fox 17, we do this, we team up, we find and award local hometown heroes $1,000. Yeah, this could be anybody you know, an ordinary person doing extraordinary things in your community. The way you nominate your hero is by going to fox17.com or uh, more directly poncilaw.com slash hometown hero. That'll take you straight to the nomination form. You tell us a little bit about yourself and the person you're nominating. And then every month we feature a new hero right here on Fox 17 News this morning. Promotional consideration for this program provided by Ponzi Law. We're taking a quick look at what's trending over on our website, fox17.com. It's this story, Nashville working to balance tourism growth with locals and the needs that the local folks want to see. We were out there live on Lower Broadway talking about this story and the plans that are projected to come and the numbers that are projected for how more and more tourists are coming here to Music City. If you want to read the full story, get more details about that plan, head on over, head on over rather to fox17.com. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Coming up on Fox 17 News This Morning, I'm Johnny Maffey, live at Live Nashville. We're telling you all about what's going on on Hole 15. It's going to be a party. A party with the shades. He's, he's ready to go. You want the sunglasses this morning and this afternoon for sure. Some of the hottest air so far this year, and it's prolonged into and out of the weekend. We'll look at it in your forecast. And Fox 17 News following all of your steer clear traffic updates, including this one, Antioch, multi-vehicle crash. Lots of police officers on the scene. We'll take you out there and give you some more updates. First, though, do want to say thank you for joining us here on a Friday morning for Fox 17 News. I'm Erica Glover. I'm Jennifer Waddell. Fox 17 News is always your only live local news source through 9 a.m. We're going to get you through the next hour and hopefully get you out the door both aware and ready for the day. Let's start with this, a silver alert that is issued this morning for a missing man out of Cumberland County. And this is east of Nashville over on the plateau, the TBI searching for 80 year old Roger Phillips. Last seen Wednesday, a TBI reports that Phillips is about 5'11 with you could see gray hair, perhaps a gray mustache. He has blue eyes. Yeah, so he may be wearing black jogging pants with a white stripe down the side and black shoes. The TBI says Phillips could be traveling in a 2010 Ford F-150 with an extended cab. It's a truck with a Tennessee tag. If you're looking at this, maybe you recognize him or you have seen him. You were asked to call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Let's go to Clarksville now where 
One person unfortunately has died and another is in the hospital after a shooting in Clarksville. Police say they found two victims with gunshots in a house on Timberline Drive. This was yesterday afternoon. You can see that neighborhood lined with police tape and officers. Again, one person died and another person uh, is in critical condition after getting life flighted here to Nashville. This investigation is still active this morning. We'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more. In just a couple of hours, Live Golf is kicking off for the first time here in Nashville. And all week long, we've been talking about how so many folks are excited to be in the Grove. Yeah, we've got professional golfers, some of the best in the world, all the fans coming here as well. Fox 17 News reporter Johnny Maffey live on the course with what we can expect starting today. Good morning, Jen and Erica. So tee off is at uh, 1215 coming up this afternoon. It's going to be hot. Make sure you wear that sunscreen, unlike me right now. Stay hydrated, maybe bring a bucket hat too here. But one thing, you can get a little shade at the party hole here at hole 15, and Jeremy Krug was the vision behind all of this. This is not something normal golf fans are used to. Can you talk about what's going on here? It's crazy. Yeah, I'm glad they kind of, you know, turned on my ribbon board that you see around here. So yeah. the biggest thing is when you arrive here, you know, here in a couple hours, you're going to hear the vibe here at the, the party hole. So mm -hmm. what we did probably in 2022 is we said, hey, how do you create this arena in our par three? On a uh, golf course. Yes. And so bringing in a ribbon board experience, you come here, there's the setting, but it's an experience for everyone. So we have hospitality structures that you see, but you see I've got a, a hundred live golf tables. I got food trucks, got everything else. So what you're gonna see when gates open at 10, um, everyone's gonna be like, you know, where's the party hole? Yep. And this is where it's gonna come. And, and, and I'll be honest, like I said this two weeks ago, like, you know, our players are embracing what we're doing. They actually came up to me, I think it was, last year and they said why don't you do a party hole on every golf course <laughs> like this is it and so when you come here players get done on 14 <clears throat> their bl blood pressure is going a little higher mm -hmm. they know that they're arriving yeah. um, when they come around this little player bridge um, when they arrive on this tee box that we're standing right now they actually have a choice to kind of have their own walk-up song yeah. so what what you're going to notice is we have some personalities yep. and some sense of humors and everything else so like you're going to put your tee in the ground and you're probably going to be bon jovi and yeah. i'm going to be yeah. <laughs> i'm going to be keith urban but it's yeah. it's something that's really going to create this experience and that's our biggest goal you know we, we want we want the experience to be different in golf mm -hmm. We have music if you can hear it around, yep. so it, it's going to be fun. So one thing, I was at the press conference with U.S. Open champ Bryson DeChambeau the other day, and he was saying you guys have a lot of stuff in the works. Um, talk a little bit more about those players embracing everything. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that we wanted to do is, um, you know, it's a culture of, you know, we're all doing it together. So the music was kind of interesting, right? Yeah. But when you talk to those guys, they're like, look, when I'm at home, I've got the boom box, I get in the golf cart, I'm, I've got, you know, yeah. music in my ears. And then we started with just a few speakers around the course. Yep. But here this week, we have over 180 speakers around the course. Yep. They'll actually come up to me, hey, the music's kind of down on 13 us, and come again. Yeah. You, you're not, not, <laughs> now you're talking about the music and the yeah. vibe, and yeah. they love it because it's this vibe. They understand, like, inside the ropes, they're mm -hmm. still competing. I Definitely. mean, they're, they're the best players in the world, but outside, they understand what we're trying to do. They're showing off those personalities, but they're competing. Well, tea time, like I mentioned, is at 12.15. It's a shotgun start, and, hey, hole 15, it's going to be a party. We'll talk a little bit more about everything coming up at 8.30 right here on Fox 17. And if you want tickets, head over to livegolf.com. Guys, we'll send it back to the studio. And I tell you, even though it's gonna be hot, the thing is, even with the heat, it's not gonna rain. So we're not gonna worry about thunderstorms or anything to slow down the action out there or, you know, be a damper, either. literally, on the party. Taking a look here as far as the forecast goes. 95 degrees today, 89, or I should say 98 degrees tomorrow and 98 on Sunday. It's going to be hot, and again, from noon to 6 is when all the action is going to take place on the golf course itself. So 92 goes to 95 at 3 p.m., 93 degrees, 6 o'clock. 101 will be your heat index value, and there's not even going to be a breeze out there. So it's going to be hot and humid. And yeah, Johnny has the shades on. You want the shades. You want to have ways to beat the heat when it comes to uh, extra water. And this is for everyone. Yes. That was for the golf course, the Grove, but we're all dealing with this. The first weekend of summer with limited rain chances, and we're going to be feeling like we're above 100 degrees today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We'll look at that in the seven-day forecast in about 10 minutes. Steer clear.
traffic, 806 right now, and uh, we've had a bit of a slow go I-65 at Trinity Lane this morning going all the way back up north toward Briley Parkway. So that that quadrant of your northern commute this morning has been a little bit backed up. Uh, still would recommend if you don't want to get caught in it, which is what we're seeing here at I-65 at Trinity Lane, you could take the detours of Dickerson Pike or Gallatin Pike to come in. Those look good right now. Well, coming up on Fox 17 News this Friday morning, a mother facing new charges regarding the disappearance and death of her daughter. What her lawyer and others had to say about the court case and what's next for this court case. Hey, speaking of court cases, we're taking a live look this morning just outside the U.S. Supreme Court in the heart of our nation's capital. A lot of topics and we could see a lot of decisions coming in from the Supreme Court over the next week or two. Decisions on gun rights. Um, opioid crisis, abortion access, and what Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Time right now is 8.09, and we're mapping out the location of a recent shooting where we've just learned uh, a victim has died. That man shot in the head over the weekend. 19-year-old Darwin Enriquez Perdomo initially hurt in the shooting that happened in a Nolensville Pike parking lot Sunday. Um, we understand that he got dropped off at Southern Hills Medical Center uh, by somebody who police are still trying to track down, uh, and he has now died. There was apparently a big group of cars in this parking lot there off Nolensville Pike doing donuts, driving erratically when the shots were fired, and Enrique Perdomo got hit. Now, if you know anything about the events leading up to his death, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. <laughs> In Operation Crime and Justice, there is an East Tennessee mother who has been behind bars for four years, awaiting trial for the disappearance and death of her 15-month-old daughter. Well, now she is facing new charges. Megan Boswell facing another first-degree murder charge on top of 19 other charges. And because of the attention this case is getting, Megan Boswell's attorney is asking the court to relocate her trial to another city. A judge is set to hear arguments on relocating the trial on August 15th. What we've asked is to move it out of Sullivan County. Obviously, I think this case has been picked up in most of the major news markets in Tennessee, but it probably has not been examined as heavily, say, in the Nashville market or the Memphis market as it would be here because it's not local to them. I've always maintained that we believe that we can pick a jury that can fairly hear the facts of this case and render a decision based on the facts and the law. By the way, uh, with regards to this case, Governor Lee signed Evelyn's Law three years ago in honor of Evelyn Boswell, Megan's daughter, um, and it increases the penalties for parents who do not report their children missing within the first 48 hours. Coming up in your forecast, we have arrived at the weekend here, the first one of summer. You can see the sun going to be the, be the main star of the weekend, along with the heat and humidity. We'll take you hour by hour in your forecast. And steer clear traffic updates taking us out to Bellevue. We are monitoring other incidents out there, but right now this area looking very good. And our crews are live this morning out in Wilson County, where farmers are rallying against development. Welcome back. 814 is the time. Farmers in Wilson County are taking their trucks and their tractors to a protest. Yeah, this is all part of their effort to fight against possible industrial commercial development. And this is a battle that is being fought on many fronts across the mid-state, especially in our rural counties where we have a lot of folks who want to keep it rural. Fox 17 News' Madeline Nolan is joining us live from the Wilson County State Fairgrounds. You've been talking out there with the farmers who are saying they have a message and they want to be heard. They definitely want to be heard. We're actually again, like you guys said, at the Wilson County State Fairgrounds. You can see all of these tractors. This one, they have a bunch of tractors with signs. This one saying save our farmland. And just like you guys said, this is just one area um, where they want to save these rural lands here in our state. I'm actually joined with one of the organizers. He's also a farmer, uh, Jack Pratt. Thank you for joining me. And tell me a little bit about this organization, what you guys are doing out here today. Well, we're just, like you said, we're wanting to save our farmland. Madeline, we're wanting to save Tucker's Crossroads from this potential development, which we think will just ultimately destroy the community that we love so much. Yeah, and you talk about loving this community so much and how this has always been kind of in your life, and yes. uh, you kind of got a little emotional a little bit don't, early. Don't go there. <laughs> uh, tell I'm me trying. a little bit um, about why this is so important to all of you guys out here. Well, we're a family. We have different names like Neil or Poston or Goodall or 
are, are the as this community's grown over the years, we've become a family. You know, I'm an only, I was an only child, but my neighbors became my brothers and my sisters. And when you threaten one of us or you threaten all of us, we stick together. And we, we see this as a, a threat to our family and to our way of life. And we want to protect what we've got. Okay. And you guys are going to head out here about in less than 15 minutes yep. now. Um, uh, to the county horse county county courthouse um, tell me a little bit about what you guys will be like kind of speaking with them about well there's a commission meeting planning commission meeting the, for the proposed rezoning and we want them to hear our voice we want them to realize that the county growth plan and the uh, zoning they have right now they've actually got it right they don't need to change it they need to leave it the way it is and we're wanting our voice heard on that okay they want their voice heard how many people do you think are out here and going to this meeting well, I don't know. It looks like we've got over 20 to 22 tractors or something, uh, but we're going to have probably over 200 people collectively going to the meeting okay. uh, that are they're waiting for us or it's going to be waiting along the parade route, so to speak. So. Okay, so we'll keep you guys all updated, and you can also visit our website to check in how this meeting goes. But thank you so much for joining us. And for now, live here in Wilson County, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Madeline, thank you. Erica and uh, Greg, I was just looking up Tucker's Crossroads. Uh, familiar with that. It is the western side of Wilson County. And I was just looking, you know, he was mentioning everybody's family out there. If you're farming, everybody's family. Mm -hmm. uh, in Tucker's Crossroads, I'm seeing Twisted Cedar Farms right along uh, 41. I'm seeing Pratt's Orchard and Garden Center, Neal Farms Beef Company. That's a We've lot got of farms. Watermelon Moon Farm. Uh, so many just within a few mile stretch there out in Tucker's Crossroads. So looks like they're going to take off what in about 13, 12, 13 minutes from now. Yeah. So we'll have to check back in live when they do. Let's check in though with your forecast to get you started for your weekend. Folks are trying to plan ahead, Greg. Help yeah, us out. Planning ahead and all it is just beating the heat. If you, if you can do that, then everything else is good. We're not planning around thunderstorms or inclement weather. It's just going to be hot. So as long as you're ready for that and you're geared up to know what the temperature is each portion of the day, you should be okay. We'll be at 87 degrees though by 10 o'clock quickly warming but the morning hours the very early morning hours of tomorrow and sunday we're talking right around sunrise from 5 30 until around 9 they're all actually pretty good a little humidity but temps won't be all that bad 94 by 2 and 94 degrees still at five o'clock what that means is with very little chance for rain today and tomorrow we keep the gardening game going what you've been doing if it's working don't stop just keep it going into the weekend with those high temperatures though that'll be in the 90s for a good chunk of the afternoon if you don't go out there and water right now I'm going to say don't do it the rest of the day until we get past dinner time. I know it's counterintuitive. I know it gets really hot. You're thinking, oh, my plants, they need water. They need it. If you water them when it's this hot and humid outside, that water won't be absorbed by the roots. It'll actually go into the soil and dry out a lot more of our plants and it can actually hurt them more than it helps them. Taking a look here, yeah, 81 degrees already. We did it. We broke the 80 degree mark here at 8 a.m. and we are on our way to 95 later today. Even hotter for the weekend. If you've been watching for a little while, I've changed a few of the numbers on the seven day forecast in the last half hour. They've gone down just a little bit. We're still upper 80s Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. The heat index is still going to be upwards of 100 degrees, but that actual temperature is slipping a little closer to the middle 90s than that 100 degree mark. Greg, I caught that you said garden game. All right, 819 is the time. Right now we're checking back in, back in Antioch, I-24 at Bell Road. This has been here for about an hour or so now, so we're trying to figure out, do they have any more updates? Well, we can tell you it was initially on the left shoulder. It is on the right shoulder now. You can see the flashing lights. Officers are out there trying to help the vehicle that is still there on the shoulder. So just be mindful, it could slow you down if you're heading out this area. Antioch I-24 Bell Road will continue checking back in to see if they get this vehicle moved off that shoulder. It's 820 right now. Uh, you know, we were just hearing from Madeline as she was talking to farmers in Wilson County this morning, and they're real concerned about growth in the Nashville area. And our question of the morning is this. What do you think is the biggest challenge facing Nashville? Is it growth? Is it crime? Is it homelessness or something else? Right now, 47% of you say crime, but coming in second to that is growth. 33% of you saying growth is your biggest concern. Um, I was reading some of your comments already this morning, and a lot of you in the other category have said you think leadership is the biggest challenge facing Nashville. So sound off now. This is live, and it's open. Head to Twitter.com, search up Fox Nashville, and you can sound off.
Well, talking about crime as a challenge, we're going to explain this story involving a woman facing charges. For setting a fire inside of a store called Five Below, you probably have heard of it. Mm -hmm. What police say is the reason she says she did that. And uh, just an awful story that police say this. Good morning, time right now is 8.24, looking at the forecast. And we're going to talk about all the ways you can beat the heat. We know obviously the AC is one of them, we know the pool is another one. And if you're going to be out there, there are always the variables that go into fact, not just the temperature, but everything else, UV index, so you're going to get a sunburn. How muggy is it going to be outside? You know, all these little things. So let's talk temp first. 87 degrees. If you want to go to the pool later on this morning, even the next hour, it'll be warm enough. It'll be sunny enough. 94 degrees. That's where we're going to hang out most of the afternoon. Between noon and 8 p.m., you're going to be at or above 90 in the Nashville area and at least in the mid to upper 80s in all surrounding areas. 15 minutes for the UV index and you've got a sunburn. That's how quickly you can get at this time of the year. The sun is its strongest this time of the year. And taking a look, our muggy meter, it went up a little bit into the oppressive stage. So the humidity is going to be there even overnight. And our temperatures only fall into the 70s at nighttime. The one thing we have that's kind of trying to cooperate with us here is the pollen forecast. And now it's not at zero, but it's the lowest it's been. And we get in these little doldrums when it comes to pollen rising and going down. We're going to stay down for a little bit here until we get toward the end of, I would say, July into early August. And they're going to start going back up with a new batch of allergens coming up at 830. We're going to talk about the heat, the humidity, and plan out your weekend. Find the best hours to get out and about to try to beat the heat without getting a little too much stress. Greg, thank you so much. Let's check in again for your steer clear traffic update and take you over to Bellevue, where you can see it is crystal clear. All you're going to need in Bellevue right now are a pair of sunglasses. I-40 at Highway 70. This is looking very, very good. But then let's check back in over at Antioch and show you this situation. Yeah, it's still here. Initially, it was over on the left shoulder, but you can see it's over on the right now. So officers out there, so please take your time out here. This is Antioch, I-24, Bell Road. In Operation Crime and Justice, a very strange story. A woman, this woman is now facing arson charges after police say she set a fire inside of a five below store. Take a look here. Metro Police say Adriana Ellison confessed to setting fire to a balloon cardboard display while the business was open. Well, she told police she had recently purchased an electric lighter and wanted to see how it worked. She stated that she was bored and wanted to see what the lighter would do to paper or cardboard. That's all according to police. She is now charged with attempted aggravated arson. And then a Jackson County woman is facing serious animal cruelty charges. Very disturbing story here. Do want to warn you. Police say that she left her boyfriend's dog trapped inside a car during extreme heat on purpose. Police also telling Fox 17 News that Marissa Wheeler got into some sort of argument with her boyfriend and then put his dog inside a car with the windows up. Wheeler, though, was arrested and also charged for intentionally and knowingly causing the dog's death by extreme heat. Live Golf is making its Nashville debut. We're joining our Fox 17 News reporter, Johnny Maffey, live at the Grove. He's giving all the exciting details and some live interviews. And we do want to say thank you for waking up with Fox 17 News. Every You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Now on Fox 17 News this morning, our Johnny Matthew is live at the Grove with more on today's Live Golf Tournament. He gets the best reporting, reports I should say. Greg. And taking a look here, yeah, I mean, he's out in the heat and humidity already, and you're going to see just how rough it is already at 830. If we're this bad now, how rough will it feel throughout the rest of the weekend? Yes, I keep using the word rough intentionally. <laughs> Getting into the dog days of summer. Hey, listen, traffic not too rough right now. Bradley Parkway, Opry Mills, if you got some shopping to do this morning and you're going to try to stay cool inside at the mall, that'd be a, a place to do it for sure. And good news, no backups off of Bradley Parkway right now. That'll change though as the Friday goes on. We've got steer clear traffic updates every few minutes. I like how you think. Let's just stay cool. There you go. Thanks so much for waking up with us here on a Friday morning for Fox 17 News. I'm Erica Glover. I'm Jennifer Waddell. We're glad to be your live local news source through 9 a.m. and Erica mentioned it just a minute ago. Johnny got the Johnny got the good draw this morning on the assignment as far as reporting goes. The hype all week building up around Live Golf, the competitor to PGA Golf in a completely different format oh, coming yeah. today in Nashville. Fox 17 News is Johnny Maffey out there. Johnny, I keep waiting on you to show us some of your skills out there. Come on. 
I know guys, maybe we'll show that off on Twitter a little bit later, but for now we're going to talk about Liv because you guys did say it's different, it's a competitor with the PGA. There's teeing off today at 12.15, now it's just 54 holes, so just three rounds compared to the usual four round uh, PGA golf tournament. and. We're here right now, another thing different than the PGA, at the party hole, right? And so you look at this, they try to call it an arena-like atmosphere. And again, we're right here at the Grove. This is hole 15, and we're hearing a lot of people when the gates open around 10 a.m. this morning. So just about an hour and a half, well, they're going to be flocking to here. Now, another thing going on this weekend, U.S. Open champ Bryson DeChambeau, now two-time U.S. Open winner. He's teeing off today as well, along with John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler. All the big names are right here in Nashville at the Grove, and it's going to be a heck of a weekend. One thing I do want to note is it's only 8.30 right now. I'm sweating. Stay hydrated because you get a, it's going to be Greg's Code Red forecast. I mean, to me, it's Code Red. I know it's not necessarily qualified as Code Red necessarily, but um, stay warm, and, or excuse me, stay cool out there, and, uh, and we'll be sending it back to you. We'll have some coverage later, though, live here in Nashville, or excuse me, uh, at the Grove. I'm Johnny Maffey, guys. Back to you. Johnny, thank you. We need to get inside and cool off. Get some water. That's right. Uh, it might not be a code red day, but Johnny, man, start taking the sunscreen with you, or you're, you're going to be code red. <laughs> you keep up these, you keep up all these hits outside with no shade, and, and that's what it's going to be like for today. The UV index is so ridiculously high that in 15 minutes you can get a sunburn. Well, I'm taking note as I yeah. go to the baseball field after I leave the show today. Yes, you know, good, good ball camp, <laughs> yes. and and yeah, an umbrella. Yes, and or the pop-up tent. Anything, anything. Or just hang out in the bathroom. I don't know. Whatever it works. Listen, when you get it, I'm going to take that one off no, your list. Listen, every, <laughs> you, don't knock it until you try it, man. When you've been at the ballpark for six hours and Touché. there's no air conditioning, Touché. you might just hang a little longer in the bathroom. That's just, all. Just, just, take a, just take a clothespin with you or something. Uh, taking a look, little humid today. We have that going on. Uh, definitely going to feel like the first weekend of summer from start to finish. Afternoon feels like temperatures up near 100 degrees. A few pop-up showers and storms will be out there throughout the weekend, but really the odds of anyone or everyone seeing rain, very, very slim. I would plan on not seeing any until the end of the weekend into Monday and Tuesday. Coming up, the next check your code red forecast. We'll meet our dog of the day. We've got a curious question for you. I've changed my numbers on my seven day forecast, lowered them just a touch, and I'll tell you why. That's coming up in a few minutes. Greg, right. thank you so much. We do want to check in for your steer clear traffic updates and also let you know what's happening out there. So showing you the tractors. This is over in Wilson County where our Madeline Nolan was speaking with farmers who are protesting today. They're on their tractors. They're in their trucks. They're heading down to the courthouse to say that they do not want to have their farmland be interrupted with more industrial development. So we're showing you a live look because they're taking off right now. Yeah, I want to give you speaking of steer clear traffic. I mean, this is going to be a traffic jam in the form of tractors going along Highway 141. They are at the state fairgrounds, the Wilson County State Fairgrounds along 141, and they're going into uh, the heart of Wilson County to the courthouse. So heads up, if you are waking up in the western portion of Wilson County, they do have police escorts. Hey, I just good. noticed, yeah, I noticed the Wilson County Sheriff's Office is here uh, to give them that escort, but please slow down, you know, take it easy if you see this big, essentially parade. Yeah, because she was tractors. asking them how many farmers could be participating mm -hmm. and it could be at least 22. So that's a lot of uh, folks out there on the roads. S speaking from experience, one tractor can slow you down. Ooh, imagine if, if even more. 20. Yeah. All right. Hey, steer clear traffic. Otherwise looking okay out there on the roads. I'm doing a quick behind the scenes check and confirming. Yes, we are currently crash free here in the mid state. So you got the green light. We do have continuing coverage, though, of bail reform and repeat offenders, a big issue that we've covered extensively on Fox 17 News. Well, last night, Tennessee Voices for Victims, they hosted a bail reform panel, including Nashville judges, the DA's office, and crime victims who say, yeah, they're working towards finding a solution. Yeah, we're talking about the issue of repeat offenders who are let out only to reoffend. Fox 17 News reporter Karen Aguilar with the story. They shot her, and they shot her again and again. And as they ran away, they continued to shoot her. Nancy King is upset, recalling when her daughter was shot in Green Hills by a repeat offender. Joining this bail reform reception and panel hosted by Tennessee Voices for Victims. 
Her daughter survived, but she hopes it won't happen to anyone else. He was out on bond from these other crimes when he attacked and shot Gracie. King's story is one of the many where criminals have been let out of jail for low or no bond. Convicted felon Anton Rucker is one example. Metro police say he shot multiple people and killed one man Easter Sunday. Rucker was let out on a $50,000 bond. He paid only $5,000 to get out. Police say he committed another crime after. The list goes on. Judges and magistrates are blamed for making the decision. For the first time, we are hearing from judges in tonight's panel, our own Dennis Ferrier moderating it. Judge Steve Dozier says they have to follow the law. He says legislators are trying to increase bond, and he is behind it. They're trying to add about 20 new charges to uh, if an individual is charged with those 20 new crimes other than capital murder, we can deny bond. He says it is up to the DA to revoke or increase bond. I don't know where the philosophy comes where we can let violent criminals out, especially on low or no bond. The judges here say they don't do fact finding, but only what is presented in court by defense attorneys. Bobby Ballinger is a defense attorney. They advocate for their clients to get the appropriate bond. The discussion was a way to figure out change. I hope you support the local judges and legislators in pushing through bond reform. All right, if you'd like to read more of our coverage on repeat offenders and bail reform, you can head over to fox17.com right now. We've got an entire section dedicated to that topic. Coming up, though, we're talking more about a man free on bond in Nashville, talking about repeat offenders, once again arrested after a multi-county chase in a stolen car. Right now on this Friday, happy Friday to you, first of all, and a couple different live looks. Top left is downtown Nashville. No rain, just hot and hazy. Bottom right, Briley Parkway at Opry Mills. If you're going to hit the mall to cool off today, that would be one of several places you could do that. Uh, just a reminder, we've got you covered for about the next 20 minutes, live and local. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. It's 841. Operation Crime and Justice now. A man who was out on bond and wanted for robbery arrested again after police say he led them on a chase in a stolen SUV and he ended up getting hit in traffic on I-65. So another case of a repeat offender. Metro Police say detectives spotted a black Nissan Rogue taken during a Mapco robbery on June 10th. And they say Cornelius Pierce, this man right here, took off in that SUV. As he drove on Davidson County out of there, a Metro police officer tracked him in a helicopter. Franklin and Brentwood police stopped the car on I-65 North by using spike strips. But listen, it didn't stop there. Police say Pierce got out, jumped over the dividing wall onto I-65 South, and then may have tried to carjack another vehicle. But that car hit him. Pierce was taken to the hospital with serious injuries, and now he's facing more charges. At 842 our time, we added one more 90 to our list yesterday. So now we're up to nine of them so far this year, and we're only going to add more. We're guaranteed to hit 90 today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So our average of 49 times getting there in a season, we have a really good chance of getting there if we keep this going as long as we have already. And taking a look, yeah, we know the AC is on. The one thing with the air conditioner is it does not cool things. It's designed to remove heat. So it can take about 20 degrees worth of heat out of your home compared to the temperature outside. And that's pretty much it. So when it's 98 degrees this weekend and you're only stuck in the 70s and you got that thing put all the way down to 60 something, you might not get there and that's why. It's not broken. It's just doing the best it can. Just keep that in the back of your mind. All right. Curious question this morning. The word mortgage comes from a term in what language? Italian, French, Latin, or Greek? I'll have the answer for you coming up in a few. Steer clear traffic all in all this Friday morning. Y'all have been on your best behavior. We've had just a couple of minor crashes um, and things are looking good right now. Those crashes have cleared out. This is I-65 at Rosa Parks. Even very light traffic flow here on this Friday. We've come to the conclusion that a lot of y'all must either have the day off or you get to work from home on Fridays. Uh, so really great news. If you've got anywhere to get out and go this morning, I'm looking at all of the interstates around Middle Tennessee right now. We just have a couple of very minor slowdowns in the typical spots. No crashes reported right now. If you're traveling this summer, we want to let you know about travel schemes impacting Nashville passengers. Breaking down what you need to know if you're heading over to the airport. Welcome back. It's 846 right now. We have farmers in Wilson County who are protesting today and they're taking their concerns straight to Wilson County leaders. 
They say they don't want their farms rezoned for different use. Joining us live is Fox 17 News reporter Madeline Nolan. Madeline, not too long ago, we saw those tractors and the cop cars behind them pulling off from the area where you are right now. Yeah, that's right. They actually were staging here at the fairgrounds. But again, like you guys said, they took off just about 10 minutes ago. And if we pull up some video from earlier again, 10 minutes ago, you could see them leaving the fairgrounds here. Now, um, organizers say over 20 tractors and around 200 people along the routes were traveling through Lebanon to the county courthouse over a mile away to speak at the planning commission meeting, which that's going to be happening at 10 a.m. today. Now, the county is considering an application to rezone 1,400 acres of land currently zoned as agricultural to light industrial to allow for a siting of a new industrial park by an out-of-state developer. Now, the area that's under consideration is what some organizers say is the largest single tract of open land in the county located in a community called Tucker's Crossroads. Now, again, they just took off and they're going to head to the county courthouse. They had signs posted sit up all over their tractors saying um, no to this industrial park, um, save our farmlands, as well as um, also uh, they also had some saying like no farms, no food. Very, very important stuff to them as they got really emotional talking about this earlier. Um, for now, we're live here in Wilson County, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your code red station. 48 your time. We're going to take a look at the answer to my curious question. When you hear the answer to this, and the odds are good, you may agree with where the word comes from. The word mortgage comes from a term in what language? Italian, French, Latin, or Greek? And it comes from French. It comes from a term that means death pledge. So if whenever you sign your mortgage and you have to pay it every month, it kind of feels like a little party is getting stabbed here or the death punch is coming your way, that's a death pledge. But this is just the most beautiful face this morning that we've had on TV. Take a look here. We've got Ali sent in by Melanie, our dog of the day here this morning. And I'm telling you what, right now, a little dog treat, a little walk later today. Definitely in the cards. It's just when you pick your time to get outside to be most safe for everybody. I would say after 11 o'clock, Stay indoors the, the best you can with the four-legged friends until around dinner time and beyond. When the sun starts to go down and the temperatures drop a little, we're in the mid-90s later on this afternoon. Send us your dogs of the day. Go out to Facebook, meteorologist Greg Bobis. you find my little dog, Obi, right there. She brings your photos to me, and then I bring them to everyone else right here on Fox 17 News this morning. We love sharing your pictures every morning. 81, we're already climbing. We had temperatures that were about 7 degrees cooler about three hours ago. We are already cranking it up. We're going to be on our way very easily to 90 degrees by right around lunchtime, and then we keep going to 95 in the middle of the day. How do you keep up with the forecast on the go? This is that time of the year where people are coming into town. We're traveling. We have vacations. This will help you even when you're not here back home. All across the U.S. works nationwide. If you scan the QR code right there and get the Fox 17 Code Red weather app, you can have the radar with you and that local temperature plus our back home forecast we give you every day. Greg, thank you. I'm doing a quick check of our Smartway TDOT maps. Not seeing any issues, so we are going to take you then to this area. Bradley Parkway, Opry Mills. We are not seeing any kind of slowdowns. That is really good news out there. Always want to share that kind of update. If you're heading out this way, we're giving you the green light, but we'll continue sharing steer clear traffic updates. We'll do one more quick check in just a couple of minutes. Well, I know a lot of you are getting ready for summer travel, but the Better Business Bureau is warning you about travel schemes, especially when it comes to airline tickets. Yeah, so Fox 17 News is Peyton Muse telling us what we need to know. Good morning, Peyton. Good morning, Jen and Erica. So before you book those flights, think twice. Imagine showing up at the airport thinking your flight is ready to leave and it doesn't even exist. Now that's what the Better Business Bureau tells us is happening. And when you see an airplane ticket price that is too good to be true, know it's likely fake. And what these online websites do is lure you in with unbeatable prices. You're just going to start getting communication, whether it be via phone number, uh, they're going to call you, they're going to text you, they're going to email you, that that flight's been canceled, they want to move you to a different airline, there's going to be an upcharge, or that there was an error in the booking. Now, the BBB says it's important for people to do their research and you can report issues to the Better Business Bureau. For other resources and tips, head over to our website at fox17.com a little bit later today. Live in studio, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your Code Guard station.
quick look at our latest headlines for Operation Crime and Justice. This woman is now facing arson charges after police say she set a fire over at a Five Below. It's a popular store. Metro police say Adriana Ellison confessed to setting a fire to the balloon cardboard display while the business was open. She also told police that she had recently purchased an electric lighter and that she wanted to check out how that electric lighter worked. Hmm. She said she was bored and that she wanted to see what the lighter could do to paper and cardboard. Well, she is now facing aggravated or attempted aggravated arson. Interesting. Okay, 8.55 is the time right now. And a live look down on Lower Broadway. Alanis Morissette coming to Bridgestone this weekend. We've got Smokey Robinson uh, as well performing over the weekend. Uh, we've got different locations and different events. Plus, we have Live Golf down in Williamson County. Tis the season. Oh, don't forget about the uh, the fair in Hopkinsville, too. Yes. yes. Southern Kentucky. We've got so many things that are happening, and yeah. it's so hot outside that just, I apologize in advance, messenger, not person who creates it. Just know <laughs> that at least we're not dealing with, you know, like 88 and humid and then thunderstorms. Yeah. At least it'll be dry. So it's just finding ways to beat the heat, and then you'll be okay. I wouldn't worry about anything more than a pop-up shower this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon. I mean, the really tiny ones that they don't even give us. The Rocket Review is sponsored by Why Not Saloon. Kim Ritchie. Kim, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, what about this new album uh, that you just had come out in May, Every New Beginning? I was listening to this, Kim, and it's like the depth of, of the songwriting and the recording and everything. How did you come up with this? I've been doing this for about 30 years now. Uh -huh. So uh, when I first started out, I wrote every day, all the time. So I have a very large back catalog.